and success. This is more specific. For the name, the just keeping the acronym PCCM, expanding it to Institute for Cross Culture Consulting and Management. That way, it wouldn't change for the present client, but it would be more findable for the new ones. Lastly, for the logo, we propose two new ideas that contain a graphic element, which is more iconic and usable for brand recognition. Moving to section three, we propose some new directions ICCM could approach. These ideas are primarily focused on creating partnerships. Partnering up with Florida Tech University, ICCM could, one, provide students with a two-step test to verify their culture intelligence quotient, maybe by collaborating with X culture. Two, involve students in social media management of their channels to gain experience to write in their CVs. Three, provide students with courses and research to study whether the university context is cross-cultural friendly or not, as well as to test their propension to work abroad or in cross-cultural contexts. This could be a first try for a scalable model to expand. Partnering up with high schools offering training. High school environment is constantly more cross-cultural and both students and teachers need to be prepared. Leaving the education field, we move to a more commercial one. Chambers of Commerce and Trade, as well as the employment agencies, could be interested in, assess in assessments like 3CM for their staff and their clients. Exhibition and trade fair organizations could be a good target client since they need to be prepared to face cross-cultural situations in terms of internal management and in terms of customer services. ICCM could provide assessments like the 3CM course, especially to translators and interpreters. Eventually, we propose two sorts of dream projects, Summit Goes Global and Tourism Off This Planet. Tourism Off This Planet starts from the point that tourism will constantly increase in time while available space is not. So tourists need to be prepared to face new conditions. On that, on that purpose, ICCM could both help tourist operators and tourists face this approaching trend. On the other hand, Summit Goes Global may be a long-term project, starting from the point that climate issues are a serious and current theme. And in order to safeguard and save our planet, the best professionals and experts from all over the world will have to team up and efficiently work together. In this context, ICCM could help dissipating cross-cultural gaps and entering to its humanistic vocation. To conclude, after defining the industry and the markets where ICCM belongs to, as well as its opportunities, we tried to, be to better profile for ICCM, improving online and social media presence. We underwent this process by highlighting ICCM's best features and potential. As you can see from the ideas developed in section three, we hope ICCM can approach new sectors and experience since a globalized work will, def will definitely need guidance and knowledge to understand cross-cultural differences in order to make a positive energy. Um, that is the end of our presentation. Thanks for your time and attention. Very Thank, for your Thank yes. you for your presentation. Yes. So um, let's get to the questions. Uh, Catherine, are you still there? So you guys maybe stop sharing your screen so we can see you better. And uh, let me see if we can get the company representative here. So let me scroll all the way down to um, Catherine, who, who would like to hear, obviously, in this case. Um, so let me see. Yeah, here she is, promote to panelist. Uh, so, and um, everybody, it's now your time to give some feedback and ask questions. So we are monitoring the questions. So if you go to yeah. the and type your questions, we will make sure to uh, read them to the team. And Kim, you are now in the uh, panelist role, so I guess you see the questions as well. So um, Catherine here is with us, and she's saying, great job, Team 450. I enjoyed reading your report and found the insights actionable and thorough. One question I have is, what does the team think is the best new direction they proposed and why? Um, Personally, I think uh, the best new direction is uh, is the summit goes global. Um, that's just because uh, climate issues are real. I know some people believe that that might not be true, but uh, climate issues are rising everywhere in the world. You know, the like we we just need we we just need to 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 use the platform that ICCM has to help gather uh, like social leaders and global leaders um, to help save and safeguard our planet. All right. And like, 
it 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 it'll help us uh you know like it'll help us feel like we're doing something important as a as a human as a humankind you know what i mean okay fair enough uh there is a question from leo from university of tampa the question is uh what is the best promotion channel to advertise the symposiums the summit so what would you recommend here um, I could answer if if uh, that's okay, Marcella. Um, I believe that Facebook, um, even though in the U.S. it wouldn't seem as the biggest platform, because right now Instagram, um, given the the protests and the rights going on over here, um, Facebook is the biggest platform that we have worldwide. Um, it's really easy. I work in marketing myself. Um, using platforms like Facebook, you can um, do. 30 second advertisements, you can do little quick notifications that'll pop up on, on your screen. Um, and the, it costs very little and it's really easy to set up. Um, like you just have to create a page, um, like a business account and you can market your, 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 your product um, for everyone to see. And you can also um, search up trends that people are searching up. So the people that are looking at the advertisements are more likely to click on it, not just a random person. And in addition, you can structure your own public. That's the real like power instrument, power tool of Facebook. So if you want to reach a specific target client, you just need to structure your public and to structure up a specific campaign with a proper uh, like templates, uh, link, language register. And so that's the real fact that can help you using Facebook more than other uh, like social media platforms. And the X generation, so people ranging from 36 years old to 60, there are what we um, studied as the X generation people are those people who are generally employed in commercial departments and human resources department. So they are the professional um, person we are looking for. So our like dream bio personas and they use Facebook as their favorite social network. So. It's, uh, it all has many advantages, Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Now, Professor Cristina Robledo is saying that uh, she finds the presentation very neat and consistent. She likes your proposal. It is straightforward and relevant. And then uh, Professor Tavoletti uh, from Italy is asking, Mauritius is a strange target uh, market for consulting. Indeed. Can you explain your recommendation here? And yes, I bet half of the audience cannot even show no, Marcella. that. And I bet even half uh, wouldn't even know what continent it is on. So why Mauritius? I mean, that, that's such an interesting country. Yeah, we evaluate Mauritius because we assess um, different criteria, like for example, um, how competitive the country was and um, what the level of, um, what number of businesses were trying to move there. So we found that there are even universities that are trying to allocate some of their um, faculties there and then trying to uh, come up with students from different nationalities. Then you can find interesting that um, you could perhaps partner with them and try to provide um, intercultural training. Uh, why not, because, why not um, doing these sort of things? Because it's important uh, for the new students to adapt and to know how to deal with situations in this new environment and also because there are other um, enterprises that are trying to move to this country it's um, developing really fast and is one of the most important uh, now uh, in, in Africa. Very good. We have several professors providing pretty detailed feedback. Uh, Olga Zvereva, uh, Kimberly Cole, very good. So, and uh, I'll make sure to download it and then send it to you later so, so we can save some time. There is one more question from Hussein Baranini. Great job. How did you come up with the new logos? How did they relate to ICCM? Uh, can you, can you comment on your logos? Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait. The, the, oh, the, visual, uh, the, the logos that you designed. Yeah. Yeah, the, the logo we created together and Marcella proposed there, I think they're really good. Um, the real um, like positive point is that ECCM actually has like two logos. One, there is the one we proposed in the presentation, so the circle one, and the other one, this is like um, 
a rectangular um, red uh, with a with a horizon, so it's a CM, and it's something mm, not much iconic and uh, hardly to communicate. So you need to uh, have in your mind as like four uh, for a letter word, and you need if you want to create a brand recognition to do some personal branding as also for the company, you need a more iconic element. So we we try to keep ECCM's colors so gray and red, uh, giving it some two. The, the, the ideas are two. Um, the pyramid one is like the third eye process. It reminds you the third eye process or so something they already have that is a pyramid. And the other one is like two people that are like embracing themselves. So it's like culture uh, meeting together and like cross culture different, cross culture gap that you could feel. And these are two ideas. So like PCM third eye process symbol and also cross cultural meeting. That's it. And I was going to move on to the next team, but there is one more interesting question from Professor Gregory Kivenzer from Pennsylvania. He's asking, uh, or he's saying that you considered only the direct competition. However, frequently the threat comes from indirect competition. Did you look at any companies that could be competitors, but indirectly? It's a tough yes. question. And <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you've looked yeah. into it. Well, we, um, we did not talk about them because of time, but we consider as well indirect competitors. And there are five main indirect competitors that are, um, they are global, they are big, but they are mostly private, private companies, private consulting companies. So um, they offer training, they offer consulting, they offer a lot of different sort of projects. And um, they are um, their positioning on the web, their websites, it's very, um, it's very well developed. And they, yes, they are such a big threat. So. Okay. Yeah, because the criteria we use to consider direct and indirect competitor is the fact that ECCM is an a university institute. So it has something more than a private company. It has recognition, it has academic experience and also knowledge. So we consider all the institutes and all the private companies as the two main category to divide competitors. But in terms of time, we should have like uh, much like mix it together. And uh, it was hard, part of the challenge for today. Was to compress the project. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I see we're getting a lot of feedback from professors and that's very good. And uh, I'll save it for you. So some very positive, uh, some uh, comments on some like, for example, presentation is a little too academic, perhaps it would have been, um, you know, higher energy would have helped, but generally very positive feedback that I see, I'll send it to you later. Now, uh, Catherine, were you going to say something to them as well? Or um, I saw several questions and comments that you left. So I'm not sure if you can uh, unmute your microphone and say a few words. Um, no, I just, I had a couple other questions, but I don't want to take up too much time. I know you have a lot of presentations, but I wanted to say thank you so much. I really enjoyed reading your report. Um, I definitely thought um, there were a lot of great ideas and very interested in the marketing section you guys proposed and I found everything to be very um, justified and clear steps written out. So for an IO psychologist like myself who knows nothing about this, I thoroughly appreciate it. So thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, Julia, yeah. then let's uh, move this team out and then um, at the next team. So team 35 will go next. And then we will switch to team 42. Both of the teams worked on the challenge from one more day. And we have the company representatives here. So we have Pierre Quinn from Manco here. So the company founder. And um, so we'll see how things go. Yeah, thank you very much. And Pierre, uh, Pierre Quinn, I'll add you right away to the panelists. Uh, so this way, if you have any questions during the presentation, you will be able to ask them. Uh, let me, can you raise your hand one more time just so I see you? And then Julia, meanwhile, will move one team out and the other team in. And so um, we will go with team 35 and then team 42. Okay. And it will take us a minute or so to switch. Hi, everyone. Once ready, we will go on with the next. Uh, Vas, uh, please uh, remove the team of, of uh, we'll do. 150 yeah. because I can't do it. Uh -huh, yeah, and I need to, yeah, okay, I will do that. Uh, just a second. Um, why would it, it, it doesn't allow me to move the team either. 
Uh, uh huh. Yeah, let me go. Okay. All right. So, team 415, we are moving on. Okay. Team 35, you guys are here. Are you ready? Uh, are you waiting for anyone? Everyone's here? Okay. So then it's all yours. I'll start the time. You know how to share the screen if you need uh, to. Sorry. Um, I'm trying waiting, to share my. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Just a second. Sorry. Will only yeah. one of you share the screen or all of you? One. Just one, mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Yeah, let me see. I think I need to make you co host for that. So um, I probably said something up wrong. Yeah. So it should allow Elizabeth to share the screen now. So you are the teenager team, aren't you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, okay, all right, well, let's see if you're going to beat those older and more experienced students. So, okay. Can you see the screen now? Yes, and I'm still getting questions for Team 450 and feedback. Thank you so much. We will get to that in a second. Oh, very importantly, before we um, start with the next team, we need to take a vote on performance of Team 450. So if everything goes fine, you should see a poll pop up on your screen, those of you who are watching. And so uh, you can vote, I'll share the results later, but um, um, just cast your vote and give the grade that you believe the team deserves. And uh, we will then compare the numbers and uh, do the calculations and we'll make the announcements of the winners right at the end of the conference. Okay, very good. The, the ratings are positive. Uh, we have a full range, so we have at least one person who gives a somewhat negative uh, vote, but we have many people who give maximum votes. And I'll give the numbers, the complete numbers at the end, but yeah, very good. Team 450, you're getting very good numbers. I'm not sure if it's showing it to everybody. I think only I see the numbers and only the uh, panelists. But yeah, not bad at all, great job. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the next team will be able to beat your score. Okay, and stop. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to, to Team 35 one more day. You guys ready? Uh, I think one member is missing. One member is missing. Let me check a quick, take a quick look here. So maybe I just... Uh, I, I have added. I have added. Uh -huh, everyone. Uh, everything might be okay. Mm -hmm. So is it, uh, what's the name of the team member whom you're missing? Uh, uh, Yevgen. Uh, so no, we should have... be in now? Yeah. Um, so I what, can see him in a panelist. Uh -huh, so maybe he, it just takes him a second to activate his um, microphone. Mm -hmm. Let's start. Uh, and hopefully missing. his technology will work in a minute and he will be able we, to talk as well. We are also missing Ramina. Uh, mm -hmm. And Ramina, I see Ramina is raising her hand. So let me add Ramina. Ramina didn't put the team number in her name uh, or before her name. So we didn't know that she's part of the team. So let's see if we, we, we should be able to add her to the list. Yeah. So she should be joining any, um, any second. Yeah, okay, Ramina should be in any second as well. Are you able to start without them or you need to wait for the whole team? Um, we need to wait for the whole team. Okay, let's give it a minute or two. Yeah, and uh, Yevhen is here, Serpila, very nice. Yeah, thank you Yevhen for letting us know. And uh, Ramina, okay, very nice, yeah. Okay, so everybody's in. And they, they sent us messages saying, you forgot about me. Well, Ramina, you forgot to put the team number before your name. So that's how we know that you're one of the presenters. So hopefully, are you guys able to talk? Jenya, Ramina? So Ramina yes. seems to be ready, right? Uh, Yevhen, uh, I think you need to activate your microphone for some reason, it, it's not working. Uh, it could be also a technology issue. Normally, if it works, it works right away. This time it didn't, so the team may need to uh, regroup on the fly and uh, uh, present uh, with Yevhenny just watching but not presenting. So it almost looks like something's not working. I think he's trying to re-log in, so it looks like he left and we'll be rejoining in a minute. Well, guys, why don't you go ahead? You know, things happen. Sometimes technology is not working. So hopefully your uh, last team member will be able to join any minute now. And um, yeah, let's start now. Oh, okay. Good day, everyone. This is Team 35. My name is Mafra, and I'm from Ecuador. Hello, my name is Sienna. I am from Canada. Hello, my name is Eliza. I'm from Mexico. 
Hello, my name is Tamina. I'm Kyrgyzstan. Hello, my name is Leila, and I'm from Spain. Today, we will be presenting the business plan that our team created for One More Day, a study app designed to help students prepare for exams. Here is our market analysis. These are our survey results. We asked students if they would consider using the app and 30.8% said that yes, they would. 18% of students we interviewed already use an app for exam preparation. When asked what they wanted in a study app, the most common response was a study tracker. Let's look at our SWOT, five forces and competition analysis. The strengths of One More Day are that in general, it is a unique concept and since it is a smaller company, there is total control. The weaknesses are that the marketing focuses on well, a more popular feature with study tracking. Assets like gamification are fragile and there are some technical issues with translations. There is no testing tool like our competitors have in their apps. Opportunities are that there is area to take lead position in the market. Some competitors have a weaker business model and students are searching for study apps because of the COVID-19 crisis and online classes. Threats are that there is a lack of resources, some cheaper alternatives, and searchability issues on Google and the App Store. The cost analysis is a tool that takes information from a SWOT, turn it into strategies. For example, Maximax strategy is in general taking a good market position. Maximini using adequate pricing and have people see you as a friendly face. Minimaxi optimizing search and product page and Minimini fixing typos, synchronization and gamification. Now, let's analyze our competitive environment. Probably most competitors, Modred. Because of the cost of making a new app, trade of re-entrance, low. Trade of substitute products, high. As a result of limited phone storage space, bargaining power of bias, high. And having multiple app developing services in the market, bargaining power of suppliers, low. These are your key competitors with Forest at least. Like your product, they are easy to use. However, unlike it, they have multiple features, reasonable price, market experience, and good advertisement. Conclusion is you should add multiple features, uh, lower the premium subscription price, and invest in good quality advertising. Market selection. We had 11 countries selected by generally having substantial markets to offer. We reduced that pool to five after looking closely at a quantitative analysis. We concluded that the USA is a good market to expand in. Here's why. Its market size is projected to be 20.11 million students in 2030, with 50,000 international students yearly. It has economic freedom, potential to get impacted from social media ads, ease of doing business, safe to invest in, and with strict university exams, therefore demand to harvest. Marketing. We need to generate demand, introduce a maximum number of students. Advertising must be strong and high quality. Provide initial sales. Occupy some market share. Eliminate mistrust. Create an image of our program. Convincing them in switching to premium. All future of the plan are free. Unlimited training plans, special modes, not at during breaks. Public and household uh, friends. Uh, Equensive, engage the commitment of local education authorities and high education leaders. Not person a uh, communication channel to work on social media site and groups. Referral program. At uh, one time, Dropbox had uh, was uh, successful thanks to a referral program. In 2008, uh, Dropbox had 100,000 users. In 15 months, it uh, uh, was uh, 4 million. The growth rate is treasuring 3,900%. We also recommend this for our client. Objectives. Well, what we need is to reach the maximum number of premium users, to keep active users with rewards, such as discounts, to increase the number of downloads, having good ratings, and being among the top search results. And best social media advertising options, Facebook, Instagram, and Google Ads. Social networks, Facebook and Instagram. Track of performance data, ads are displayed on behalf of your product page. Track of program downloads from your ad campaigns. 
When making advertisements, you should take in consideration that the target is American Generation Z. Operations management. About satellite offices, any updates can be done from the Walmart Day headquarters. Opening offices carry very high costs. In order to cope with the time zone differences, consider opening a call center. Licensing. The potential license taker will have to be convinced to participate, and strong financial numbers need to be involved to justify the time and money that will have to be invested. Trade-offs. The main trade-offs are translation and advertisement costs, in addition to developing incentives and new features. Some possible partners are the Southern New Hampshire University, the biggest private one, the Georgia Institute of Technology, with most of these majors being STEM related, the one that's known for being the most stressful one, and the University of Alaska Anchorage, because Alaska is the state with most cell phone users. Also, some studies related YouTubers, such as a Study to Success, Ways to Study, and Siena Santa. Competition based pricing strategy. The average competitor price is $5.05. One more day should make their prices psychologically pleasing and according to the USA studies duration. To make premium more appealing, consider adding these widgets that serve as a reminder of an app's existence and in the case of one more day, a reminder of exams, a stronger competition and gamification, the ability to block other apps from being used while on study time the ability to change teams or colors, and flashcards. This is our contact information. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You are incredible. It's so uh, unusual to see some young faces here, but your presentation and your report was very, very nice. Perfect. Yeah, right on time. Six minutes, 50 seconds. Very good. Very good. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right, um, questions. I think if we start with Pierre Quinto, that would be best. I don't know, any comments, questions, clarifications? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, I think you did a really good job. Many of the things that you have found uh, in, the, in the report that I read are uh, the ones we are working on. So it is very important. Uh, um, it's a, a confirmation for us. So I really appreciate the report. And I was surprised to see the quality of the analysis you made. Uh, you are so young, and yet you have done a very professional job. So thank you so much. Also, we thank have you. some comments from our Q&A, and everybody is uh, amazed. Great job, amazing teamwork, very good presentation. Group 65, a surprising presentation, magnificent work. Uh, your presentation is really high quality. How are you able to oh, a lot of it, to produce such a quality presentation with a day-to-day -day life? Um, I think that we all spent a lot of time figuring out this project and researching it, and we spent many, many hours putting it all together as well. Mm -hmm. Thank there are you. a lot of praise, but I don't see many comments, I mean questions. So again, some professors provided very detailed feedback and I really appreciate it. So very good visuals, interesting facts and data. So very useful. Again, we will compile the feedback and uh, share that with the teams when done. But it looks like there are no questions, are there? We have a question from Kimberly. Oh, yeah. yeah, really insightful, great presentation and really professional. I think initial frameworks used five forces can be explained. Uh, so what does it mean? instead of listing which are high and which are low for the referral problem. Actually, yeah, let's talk about those five forces. So you did say which ones are high, which ones are low. Can you explain the logic behind your sort of, you know, grades or decisions? Sure, I was the one that uh, analyzed the five forces. So can I share my screen again with you so we can yes. have the visual element? Of course, you can do that, yeah. Okay, then hang on. Let me share my screen again. And then there will be another kind of interesting, but also tough question. So let's see if you will be able to answer it. Okay, so Alisa Poyard for this. 
The first force, Rebel Gremlins Comparers. There are a lot of apps that are trying to do what you're going to do, but uh, most of the apps, for example, as we mentioned in our SWOT, they don't have a good business perspective. Why do I say this? Some of them didn't have, for example, a formal website. Some uh, were getting complaints from the clients um, that the subscription surprise for their services wasn't working. So there is competition, but they aren't taking much interest in it. That's why it's moderate. The threat of new entrants is low because um, you have a very complex app, all right? It took years to develop and the board years, there's obviously a lot, of, um, a lot of cost and a lot of time involved. So it's unlikely that more entrants come. Through our substitute products, um, there are students who don't really take their studying seriously. So they only conform with the apps pre-installed in their phone, such as a reminders app or um, simple agendas or in real life bullet journals and so on. The bargaining part of bias. Now, um, on the phone storage space, it is uh, for many students, it isn't that much storage space. So they will delete a lot of ads in order to have enough space for the apps that they do need. And they will also cut the cost of subscription costs if they see that the subscription is not working for them. Now, the bargaining power of suppliers. There are a lot of app developing services in the market, as I mentioned in the presentation. So you have a lot of suppliers to choose from. That's the explanation for the five forces. Makes sense. If I may, there are many, many questions, but there are two um, that I found very interesting. Again, there is another one from Kimberly Koch. Um, have you tried to introduce any of your peers to download the app and did it work? So did you try to promote this app? Uh, what was the response? Sort of um, real life market test. When we did the survey, we asked them if, we, they, if they will be like wanting to download it and some of them actually did to try but because we aren't having a lot of classes and exams right now I don't think they were able to test it correctly like it should understand yeah. and there is another question from um, uh, Dominic um, one of the team members uh, actually your competition so but it's a good question so he says that he likes the idea of the call center, but have you considered the cost of setting up a call center? Again, one more day is a relatively small uh, company and a call center is probably an expensive proposition. Do you think it would be worth the investment? Um, can I answer this question? Go ahead. All right. So we did, when we were asked the question, would you uh, hire anything else? We actually struggled with that question. And yes, call center can be very expensive. However, the costs vary from when you uh, choose, from wh which country do you choose to put your call center in? For example, uh, in India, for example, it is fairly inexpensive. However, we want to put the call center for two reasons. One is to, because Italy and the United States, they do have a time gap. And two, a call center builds loyalty with the client, which is what the company needs right now because um, not many people know it. I actually got the idea because I know uh, someone who owns a company what, and has their own website. The website had a call center and when he had a problem, he called the call center and they attended him nicely and everything. So that created loyalty between the company and the client. That's why we proposed it. About the cost, we figured out that the best choice could be, um, sorry, this is not patriotism or everything, but looking at it logically, it probably could be Mexico because the United States, uh, they do have call centers, but as you said correctly, they are very expensive. However, in Mexico, we check the facts and correctly assume that uh, a lot of people here also speak English as we are very close to you. And if you ask any of the families here, no matter in the class or their economic status, they mostly have a United States member in their family. That's why we proposed it. That's a very good answer, very well argued. <laughs> All right, so I think in the interest of time, let's stop here. I'm not sure, Pierre Quinto, do you have any last comments? But just one about the, the call center. It's uh, interesting. We've never thought about a call center, but um, it certainly makes sense uh, uh, to provide user support uh, uh, in different time zones and different languages. So uh, we can think about something uh, much more digital, like um, some virtual uh, assistant that can operate uh, with our 
um, ticket system uh, in, uh, in different time zones. So uh, I, I really appreciate uh, this uh, uh, suggestion. So yes, uh, again, uh, it's a really good job to me. Congratulations, guys. And now the moment of truth. So while we move one team out and the next one in, so 35 out, 42 in, let's do the polling. So uh, again, we have uh, about 150 people watching live now. So if you are in Zoom, uh, not on Facebook, you can vote. And so uh, let's, let's see what your votes are. So, and we have quite a few votes. Okay, very good results. Yeah, quite impressive. Very good, all right. So Julia, let's start moving in team 42. Um, and then uh, let me see if I can move um, team 40, uh, 35 uh, out. Thank you guys, good job. So we're moving you back to the audience. And um, so the team, the next 142 will be, will be in. So let me make sure that everything's working here. Team 42, uh, panelist, panelist, panelist. And team 42, uh, let me know which ones of you will need to share the screens because it looks like I need to do a, a couple extra clicks to make sure that you can share your screen. So, um, and uh, this time I actually wrote the team number on the whiteboard behind me so that when we watch the recording, it's easy to see which team that was. So hopefully that will help. So everybody, please finalize your votes. We will close the polling very, very soon. And um, yeah, it seems like we got everyone in, everyone out. Very good, thank you, Julia, for that help. Uh, so team 42, uh, everyone's here. Are we missing? Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, actually, that's one, one of the things when we can see you because in many cases we exchange emails, we send you all those weekly surveys and all that stuff, but we don't really see you. So here you are, so I think there's one more 35. So again, uh, so teams that or members of the teams that are presenting, make sure that there is a number before your name so that we can easily identify you from the crowd of almost 150 people. All right, so end poll for 35. Great job, guys, good numbers. We'll reveal them very soon. And um, team 42, you guys ready? Are you waiting for anyone? Yeah, we're waiting for Lena and Jana. Uh -huh. And it seems like we still have one person here from team 35, I'll just move him too. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to ask to do it because yeah, you, you added. Yeah, he's tough one to get in, but then once he's in, he doesn't want to leave. So we, we just find so one of the team members. Okay, it did work, it took a few seconds. So everybody from your team here? Um, okay, then, yeah, I guess whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. Wait, no. are Lena and Yana here? Because I can't see them on my screen. And Lena is sharing no, the PowerPoint. Two people left. So who's missing? Yeah. Yana. Yana. Now it's Yana. Uh, Yana, if you are here, can you raise your hand? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yana didn't put the name, the team number, but she raised her hand. And it sounds like Yana is from Ukraine. Wait, uh, I'm still a host. Can you get me out? <laughs> yeah. So uh, somebody is still in and needs to get out. Yeah, Ramina, we need to move you just a second. Uh, yeah. Actually, I am the one that is sharing the screen. So. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's Lena, just a second. Um, yeah, so that should allow you to share the screen. Check. Is it working? Okay, all right. Well then, let me stop the time and um, it's all yours. Go ahead, guys. Okay. So Ready, I go ahead. Can you hear you? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't realize that. Okay, so uh, greetings on behalf of One More Day, Team 42 will be presenting the ideas on how One More Day could improve their profitability. So now let's meet the team. So, um, hi, I'm Fiona E from Singapore. I'm, I'm sorry, wait, something is happening with the screen share. Can I do it all the time? Sure, yeah. Is it not allowing you to share the screen? Wait, because something happened. I just couldn't. Yeah. 
That's right. Accidentally. Yeah, go ahead. No problem. <laughs> Little technical issue. Okay. Give me a second. Uh, should I? I think that I we share can... the screen. I have the presentation also. I don't know what's happening. Oh my god. Okay, you can you can try to share the screen then. Okay. Uh, can, can I please get permission to share the screen? Yes, of course. Okay, I'm stopping. Uh, which one of you? Salim. Uh, Salim. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, that should allow you to share the screen. Okay. Can everybody see it? Yeah, everything's good. Okay. Okay, we're starting now. Okay. okay. Greetings. On behalf of One More Day, Team 42 will be presenting their ideas on how One More Day can improve their profitability. Okay, so now let's meet the team. Um, so I said earlier, hi, I'm Fiona from Singapore. And that Edel from Poland. Salim Ahmad from South Africa. And Gassim from Azerbaijan. Yeah, from Russia. So um, the first thing we did in our project is that we created a survey asking 55 participants, it's from 12 to 25, which is the targeted audience, uh, about their experience with productivity apps. And according to the survey, students prefer easy to use apps that are free. Um, and they mostly find out about it from social media. And uh, the biggest competition for one more day, according to the survey, is Evernote and Forest. Um, that's why we recommend for one more day to focus on social media advertising and adding the option of one free try of the study set. So now, in choosing our new market, we, um, on the next slide, we decided to follow a selection criteria, which is shown on the slide. And the two main criteria are that there are a high student population and a rigorous education system in the area to ensure that there is demand for a student app like One More Day. So we chose New York based on general knowledge and the statistics shown. And the market entry to New York will be by Instagram advertising. We will elaborate on this later. So to analyze this entry mode, we will quickly mention the key points. So the main benefit is that One More Day already has users in the US. Thus, there is a greater chance for success there. The main disadvantage is that competitors could already be in the new market and challenge one more day's growth. And the main risk is that users might not um, buy the premium model, but they might like it, but not buy it. And thus the conversion rate would be low. And lastly, a new cost to the company is paying for the advertising. As our new market is New York, we decided to provide one more day with some examples of private universities that can be seen on the screen. We have chosen private universities because it's more likely that students studying in these universities will have the capital to pay for costly apps. When you create a product, an important indicator for it is localization. Localization is a transfer of a market to another country. There are other reasons of which, such as increasing the company's profit and etc. Okay, so as for opening new offices, we don't recommend it for one more day. Um, due to the excessive costs. However, opening new offices could be a promising plan in the future. One more day's competitors are Evernote and Trello, as their productivity apps with similar functions to one more day and are more popular. Also with it is what analysis shown on the screen. The main weaknesses is advertisement, as students mostly get information from social media and it would be great to have ads there. The main street is language, because to make the app known all around the world, language options will affect the users attracted to the apps. The biggest strength is that it's well designed and accessible. And the huge opportunity is that there are many students out there who would benefit from one more day. For making one more day more profitable and interesting for users, it's better to provide free trial months and also changing the name to a more distinct one. For making it easier to find and remember, such as one more day learning. Um, it's not increased. A technical issue? Um, I'm sorry, yeah, a big technical issue because the person that is sharing the screen is freezed, as you can see. Uh, do you want to change and let somebody else to uh, share the screen? Yeah, it seems like some social media advertising. 
I mean, we can we can't. Yeah, it seems to be working out. Instagram uh, ads are designed in both story and for. Can we? Oh my God. Something doesn't happen to Nothing to worry about. That's the whole point of this exercise. Things sometimes go wrong. You are a team. So is it frozen because oh, I'm moving? Yeah. We need to uh, tell him that we can't hear him. One of the things we are assessing is your performance <laughs> under stress. So no. problem. Aunt, was I not sharing the screen? Salim, uh, we couldn't hear you for a long time. Um, okay, so Salim, now we're looking at improving the weaknesses and threats. That's, what, that's the slide we're looking at. Um, I think advertising is the next slide. So um, would it help if I share my screen? Yeah, I think it's the best idea. Okay, just give me a second. Are we supposed to start over again? Or? No, no, no. Well, it's your choice. You have seven minutes. Uh, we are testing your performance under, you know, online presentation. So if okay, you think presenting is hard, try presenting online when your team members are in seven different countries. So again, nothing to worry about. Do your best. So we can okay, um, start again. Sorry, can I have time? Yeah, may I have co-hosts, please, so that I can share? Already um, did. Social media already advertising. Did. Yeah, already did that, Thank so you. you should be able to do it. Yes, Sonny. Fiona, okay. is it working? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um right now we're at Salim's part. If um No, I I see I see Salim's uh, okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, now um, we can hear you. Salim, maybe you need to unshare your screen and then um it doesn't want me to unshare screen. It says I've been yeah, disabled. See if I can override everything here. So I'll share my screen that will close everybody's screen. Sorry for the interruption no network yeah, issues. Nothing to apologize. I mean, at this stage, we should focus on presenting, not apologizing. So do your best. So okay. um, my screen can see? I still see Salim's screen. I also only see my screen. It doesn't want me to stop. I don't know why. But what if you will just leave the leave and after that join it again? Guys, my little tip here is when you're running out of time and something's going not as expected, dump the presentation altogether, like all those slides, and just talk about the key points in your own language. It doesn't have to be, you know, always consistent with the script. No problem at all. Oh, right. okay. Uh, no problem. No worries. Okay, now, now uh, we can we can't see Salim's screen anymore. Okay. Uh, okay, Fiona, can you share your screen, please? Okay. Yeah, it should allow you to do so. Okay. 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 Social media advertising. But Instagram okay. ads. Can I continue? Aren't we starting all over again, though? Because. Well, remember you have about two minutes left, so do the best of the time. Okay. Instagram ads are designed in both story and photo ads. Story ads have a large number of users and have the swipe up feature, which is a call to action and promotes users to download the app. For photo ads, the best feature is that ads look like any other post, which doesn't interrupt the user's experience of the app. Facebook. Facebook has many active users and Facebook ads have a 20% higher click-through rate. To summarize, these ads are based on profitability instead of cost. Hence, running a Facebook campaign provides more flexibility with cost, allowing for high engagement. In terms of YouTubers, One More Day could sponsor a specific genre of YouTubers, study tubers, uh, who cater to a specific audience of university students. This is more expensive, but it will have a longer lasting impression on the target audience. But all in all, we recommend Instagram ads as it is most relevant to the target market. So now we propose for One More Day to use this app called Canva for graphic design. And um, we recommend the Canva Pro plan because it has enough functions and yet is not expensive as other platforms like PictoChart. So um, yes, this is what we propose. And these promotional materials are just some examples of what we can use for the proposed method, Instagram ads. So it's simple, 
is minimalistic and en encourages engagement with a fake Instagram poll. And these are just some of the main features and it's really important that the colors complement each other so it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Prices for ads for three types of social media can be seen on the screen. We recommend to buy Instagram ads because this social media is mostly used by students. Also, we provided a list of possible and profitable partners for one more day by also giving short information that can be seen on the screen. Next slide. Uh, these apps are suitable because they are also mostly used by students. We recommend having partnerships with Coursera and Evernote because these apps are popular all around the world and its functions are more or less similar to One More Day. The pricing strategy. If One More Day were to advertise, they should display the price as a decimal instead of a whole number as it psychologically traps the audience, making them think it is cheaper. Example would be instead of displaying it as $20, it could be displayed as $19.99. This is referred to as charm pricing. Um, if One More Day were to offer a discount, then if the discount is, was less than 100, then it would be displayed as a whole number. But if it is more than 100, it would be displayed as a, a percentage. And as regards to visually presenting the, uh, the prices, the premium and premium plan, we recommend that One More Day would just only display the premium plan as the premium plan, the free plan, would take the audience's attention away from the premium plan and its benefits. Thank you for watching. We are sorry for all of the inconveniences that we offered. Very good comeback. You know, sometimes things don't go as planned. As one wise man said, no battle plan survives the contact with the enemy. So things didn't go the way you expected, but you came back strong. Very good. Um, Pierre Quinto, I think you would be probably the first one if you have any questions or comments. Hello, hello. It seems like we lost. Uh... Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, this fantastic work you've done. I found several interesting ideas, um, and you have done a, a good analysis. Private university are certainly an ideal partner, and we will focus a lot on the relationship with the universities in general. Uh, also, the coronavirus has shown us a range of new opportunities to grow the project and to, to uh, support students. Uh, I also really like the uh, proposal about uh, uh, supporting study tubers, and we will certainly work on many of the points you have highlighted. Uh, so also I designed the, the One More Day graphics, so I take home the feedback on using Canva to make better graphics. <laughs> very wise comment, very good. Uh, we have a lot of questions and comments here in the, uh, yeah, so um, in the comments uh, section. So uh, different professors, different um, audience members are saying lots of compliments, beautiful graphics, good delivery, great job. Don't worry, don't stress, good job and good recovery. Um, so now there is a question. Um, Evernote was mentioned as a direct competitor. Why would they be open to a partnership with One More Day? What would be the incentive to do so for them? Okay, so can I answer this question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we said that what Evernote would benefit from the partnership with One More Day because One More Day is the adjust to its user unlike Evernote which has a standard algorithm which is for everybody so if Evernote had to adjust worth one more day they would be offering a more personal experience therefore gaining more loyalty from its consumers okay all right wonderful and I suggest we stop here because we're way over time so uh, next we have team 51 requesting to go next maybe we'll do you the next one after 47 but for now Team 47 will go next, so Team 47 get ready. And while Team 47 is being added to the panel, let's do the vote for Team 42. Again, I encourage the voters or the, the judges to take into the account the technical difficulties. Uh, so, uh, but it, it's totally your choice, so let's see what, what it goes. And so meanwhile, Team 42, Julia, let's add 42 and remove, um, I mean, sorry, 47 and remove 42. So um, let's, let's go to Team 47. Do we have Team 47 here? 
it seems like we don't have team 47, do we? No, we have, we do have them. Yeah, so all right, we have team 47. Um, all right. So we have 121 votes so far, very good. So we actually get a lot of people commenting and voting in your performance. We'll share the results later, but uh, I'm, I'm surprised how many people participate in, in this. And it seems like the technical difficulties did not affect your vote very much. You're still getting good results. We'll share the exact numbers later. But yeah. All right, team 47, get ready. And uh, team 42, let me make sure that we move everybody to the audience. Please remove the co-host also. Okay. Yep. In a 42. Okay. And I think we got everyone in and out. Oh, Jana and uh, here, Quinto, I'm also moving you to the audience now, I think. So, um, yeah, and we should be ready. So Team 47 worked on a challenge from the company called Soprano. It's a Brazilian company. They make up uh, hardware and locks. And uh, if we have anyone from Soprano here, uh, a company representative, please raise your hand uh, so we can add you to the panel as well, so we can get, uh, engage with the company directly. I mean, with the team directly, although I believe they could not make it, so I changed a few emails and it sounded like they would not be able to be here. All right, so Team 47, are you guys ready? So we have 47, so I see here Janvi, I see here uh, Leiva. Leiba, your, your picture is turned 90 degrees. Not a big problem, but I think you can click there on the settings and change that. So not a big deal, but you know, something. Yeah. Now, for some reason, we have John be here four times. Is that the plan or just an accident? No, that's no, no problem, no worries. We see one of you with the picture, so it's all good. But um, somehow you managed to join us one, two, three, four times. I don't know how that happened. I'm not going to remove the other ones just in case, uh, you know, something goes on, but we see uh, Laiba and we see Jandi and Gali for some reason and Victor are not, um, the, the videos are not going through for now. Yeah, also, I don't know how to do that. What's that? I don't know how you exactly turn the video around. Let me see if I can do that for you, but if not, that's okay, fine. Thank we'll you. you very well. So, thank um, and, and the sound is coming through. So yeah, I think that's something, must be something in, in your settings, but no problem, we see you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, so Gali is here, Victor is here. Uh, everyone, no. or are you waiting for more people, four or more? No, uh, so two more people. Uh, who will be presenting here? All of us. Uh, all of us. Is Makina and Xinlan with you, or are they? Yes, they're with us. Uh, so yeah. they didn't put the numbers, so they didn't put the, um, uh, team members in front of their names and so we didn't know that they are part of the team so I just moved them to the panelist list so they should be able to join you in a minute. Uh, which one of you will be sharing the screen? I will. Wait. Uh, should I start? I... Victor. Ah, uh, Victor. Uh, should I start? Yeah, all right, just one second. I think we need to give you the co-host permissions somewhere in the settings probably didn't say. Make co-host, okay. So Victor should be able to share the screen. It's a lot of you guys. Um, no. Is it working, Victor? No, it's disabled. Uh, still? Let me yeah. try again. Make co-host, let's try again. Victor, is it working now? Yeah. Now it's working, yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. So then, yeah, let's see your screen if you're using slides and Ready? Yes. Okay, well, all yours. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, we're Team 47. I'm McKenna, and this is Jean-Vi, Victor, Gali, Shen, and Liba. And we have chosen Soprano as our client company uh, and Canada as our new promising market, as I'm from Canada, and I realized that there is a high demand for Soprano's products in the Canadian market. Uh, we have started our report um, from analyzing the Canadian market as well as the Brazilian market in which Soprano is operating currently in the first section of our report. We've started our analysis from identifying the main competitors for Soprano and the main competitors against its thermal lines, uh, the thermal products such as thermal cups or lunch boxes, 
are Invicta, Thermolar, and more. And the main competitors against uh, Sopranos other products is non-thermal lines are Uzi, OU, and Koza. As you can see, most of those companies have corporate parents, which is their main advantage over Soprano Brazil. Uh, however, we've discussed uh, advantages, disadvantages, opportunities, and threats in much more detail in a SWOT analysis in our report. Then we went on to identify and analyze the most promising market for Soprano to expand into. And we've reached the conclusion that it's Canada, uh, and then possibly expanding into the rest of North America as well, but starting from Canada. Sorry, the presentation froze. Uh, why Canada, you may ask? It is a very well-developed country with high standards of living. Canada. Canada generally has a very high product consumption levels. The mass consumption is very diversified. Uh, the purchases are made mostly in most mass retailers and outlet stores, which we have considered when analyzing uh, the partners for Soprano Brazil, which we will discuss further on in the presentation and in more detail in the report. But moreover, impro imported products are very desirable in Canada, and 40% of Canadians are willing to purchase the products if it's priced right, even if the brand is unfamiliar. Therefore, Soprano has a very new, generally new companies entering the Canadian market have a very high potential. Thank you. Next, I'll be sharing about market analysis. Canadians have high expectations of the products, but at the same time, they are very reliable and loyal customers. They evaluate products and compare them to others. Canadians want the product to be convenient in terms of usage and to match their needs. The bandwagon effect is an important aspect of the Canadian market as well. Next, I'll be talking about market entry mode. Next slide, please. We suggest a partnership with local retailers because of its attractiveness. Retailers will already have a wide customer base and experience in the market. Allowing Soprano to reach market it could not target, expose their product to a mass market, maximize customer exposure, and help select a target audience. Canadians prefer hybrid shopping, thus advertising products and retailers online stores is encouraged. Next, Lava will be sharing about section two. Okay, so in this section, we'll discuss pricing strategies for multiple channels, messages, and promotion materials. Now, customization of products is highly important because it will build up the brand image and attract corporate customers for Soprano itself. My, me and my team think that Soprano should enter the market with penetrating pricing method and should offer both pricing although it should set boundaries to avoid negative publicity. Now, upfront payment method will be the most beneficial as transaction will be made before the shipment. And in addition to that, the planner should sign contracts with local partners before the uh, contract deal is done, so user misunderstandings are not done. Now, to maximize sales, the planner should offer bundle set sales as well as it, what it can do is it can combine its products with the competitors, that way it'll have a better brand recognition. John will take over. Okay, thank you. Advertising. Best way to promote the products is for social media for the first advertising campaign as it is cheaper and through posts, the products can be presented to potential users. And also social media's influencers can promote our products by highlighting the features. This would be a great promotional channel and the easiest way to reach the targeted audiences. In the report, we have also listed some popular influencers from the relevant fields. Next slide is saying the, the messages. Soprano's message should be based on trust and reliability for the other key company values. We would like to suggest simplest way to give your family a little taste of home as slogan for Soprano's thermal products. It should have a reference policy, an FAQ page, and also should highlight about its sustainability. Gala will take over now. So in the third section of the report, we have discussed and analyzed the operations management of Soprano. First, we dealt with everything related to logistics. So basically, as long as Soprano's manufacturing plant is in Rio Grande, the closest major shipping port would be Porto Alegre in the south of Brazil. We suggest shipping by freight cargo because with respect to the high expectation 
and the constantly comparison of brands and features by the Canadian clients, it's essential to use an efficient shipping method. Holistically, we suggest shipping by freight cargo as it allows for the best combination of price, time, and reliability to part of Montreal. Granted, Montreal is the closest major port to Brazil and is the most accessible. However, duties and taxes are imposed on foreign products, in this case, low Pranos products coming from Brazil, to generate revenue and protect local industry. Thus, the seller would have to pay duties and taxes called the GST to the Canadian government. Uh, McKenna will pursue. Exporting to Canada. There are four documents that are required in order to ship to Canada. The first is the Bill of Lading. This is, uh, lists all of the products that are carried on the shipment, and this is issued by the exporter to the carrier. The second is the Canadian Customs Invoice. This indicates the buyer, seller, and currency of settlement. The third is a packaging slip. This provides the buyer with the product details to ensure that it is exactly what is ordered. And the fourth is a certificate of origin, and this indicates the country where the goods originate from. Next slide. Trade regulations. Steps to exporting to Canada. First is to obtain a business number. This is issued by the Canadian Revenue Agency. The second is to classify the goods. This determines the correct tariff of classification and is used to determine the rate of duty on the goods. The third is to determine the commercial goods needed to be declared. This is the value of $2,000 or less does not need to be declared. The fourth is to determine the applicable tariff treatment and the rate of duty. And the fifth is to determine the value of goods you are importing. This is the amount paid to the exporter for the goods and the cost of duties and taxes is paid by the importer. Thank you so much for your attention during this short presentation. This is only a small sample of what we have analyzed in the final report. We hope you have enjoyed and thank you. Now we have time for questions. Very good work with the details on that import expert. Yeah, very educational, very good guys. All right, so any questions, any comments? Um, so professors, since we don't have the company representative, if any of you wants to comment live, raise your hand, we'll add you to the panel. Otherwise, um, any comments, any questions from the audience? And I see we have uh, a comment from Professor Joseph Poor from Hungary. Uh, she says that you use very good visual tools. Great job, guys. That's a compliment. Very good. Um, um, so any other questions and comments? Uh, so uh, there is a comment from uh, a Professor Kimberly Coe. So awesome, your target market is extremely clear. Is it feasible to open a manufacturing side uh, cage framework? So do you know what cage, the cage framework is? Did you talk about that? No, not, not really. It requires the lowest co uh, commitment to the firm. So, that, uh, that I was, so I, I was wondering if an alternative was considered. Also, so basically uh, opening a facility is a very expensive proposition, right? So simply sending the product to Canada would be cheaper. So uh, apparently you considered different options. Can you comment on <clears throat> exporting versus opening a factory in Canada? Yes. Uh, we have settled generally that Canada is a very uh, developed econ economy. Uh, so operating costs would be very high in Canada. Uh, and manufacturing products in Brazil is much cheaper. Um, has to be decided that it's, is this a better option for Soprano to export products manufactured in Brazil to Canada? Uh, but we have we have explored both options. That's a very good point. Yeah, very good answer. Um, there is a question from Professor Donato Vianelli from Italy. Have you done some specific research on the use of these products in Canada? Which segment of the population is buying more? best assortment for Canada, or what is the best assortment for Canada? So have you done any market research for Canada? Yes, okay. so I live in Canada, so I, I got a bunch of- What um, city are you in? Yes, I'm, I'm in Canada right now. Yeah, yeah, but what city, what part? Oh, Toronto. Toronto, okay, all right. Yeah, so I got, um, I went to my school actually, and I um, made like this little survey and I sent it out to like classmates and I got teachers and then I got relatives and friends of relatives and stuff. So I got a bunch of different age demographics and it looked like, so we focused on like Tupperware and like thermal products. Mm -hmm. So basically a bunch of like the most, the highest demographic in Canada that would use these products would be like um, mothers from ages like 30 to 40. 
would be our age demographic that we were targeting as they make usually in Canada they make meals for um, their families and for their husbands and stuff when going to work so like they would pack their lunches in these containers and stuff. Very good. So you did your research. Now there is a very interesting question from Maria Eduarda Corradini, uh, and we got a similar question from Professor Joseph Kour a little bit later <clears throat> about COVID-19, the coronavirus. Do you think this whole uh, global lockdown, uh, the coronavirus scare, will affect uh, Sopranos business? And if so, how? Um, generally, Soprano is a very diversified company. Uh, they produce a lot of very different products, for example, locks, uh, as well as pipes, and there's now the thermal products, as well as technological um, smart smart locks and other smart appliances for home. Um, so we think that uh, Soprano will generally should be all right as it sells uh, very different products. Um, but it's a manufacturing plant in Brazil. I know the situation in Brazil now is pretty difficult in terms of the coronavirus. Um, so it might experience some disturbances in the manufacturing process. Uh, but when we were completing the report, it was um, before the coronavirus crisis, so we haven't considered that then. Uh, but I think, I think in terms of selling, uh, the selling part of, of Sopranos business, that should be all right. But there might be some problems with manufacturing uh, plants in Brazil. It will be slightly affected, but what um, Soprano can do is it can start, um, you know, getting recognized in Canada, like both uh, ads, basic ads, and all the influencers. So before, like when it is, um, you know, selling its products there, before people will already know about them, that will be way easier for them to actually let their products be out. Yeah, fair enough. Now we have quite a few comments and questions, and thank you very much, Olhas Biareva, Christina. Uh, very good comments and feedback. Again, we will send it to the team. But there is a very interesting question from Professor John Lax, and that's something that I'm also interested in, and I kind of wish we asked other teams as well. So he's asking not about the challenge that you worked on, but on the process that you used as a team. So can you share a bit about how you manage the project and team communications? So can you tell us a little bit more about how you worked as a team? You have people yeah. in like six, six, seven different countries. Was it a challenge? Yeah. How did you communicate? Um, not at all. Your work? So basically, I think that our team was amazing. We all had great communication. So we had three like designated leaders, I guess you would call it. And that's myself, Liba, and uh, Victor. And then we had three like research people. So that would be Jean Ve, um, Zinlin, and Gali. And basically, so they collected all the data. And then Liba was really on top of us with like scheduling and like, we have to get it now. We have to do this so that we have time to like compile it and put it all together. And then so we would meet the deadlines every Sunday. So there was three of us. I was the editor. So I looked over it all and Victor compiled it and put it all together. And then so it, it worked out really well for us. So, so what tools did you use for communication? We used actually. WhatsApp. Yeah. Actually, when as soon as we got to know about the teams, what I did was I emailed everyone to get the number, like the WhatsApp number, because that is the most convenient way to be used. And we scheduled, we would just text there whenever we needed to talk, or we just call over there to get the things done. But we did do Skype meetings. We had time set up, although the, due to the COVID, we had online classes and online other meetings, and then Ramadan time came in. So that was kind of difficult, but we overcame it and we did it all together. So mainly it was WhatsApp, but we used Skype as well. Well, yeah. glad to we hear really, that. That's precisely what Excelture is for. So, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. So, we will do thank the poll. Uh, so, let's, um, everybody, you should see the poll now. Uh, cast your votes, uh, grades, marks, as they say in Canada. Right? In Canada, you say marks. You don't say grade, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, next goes Team 50, and then Team 51, and then Team 61, and then Team 164. So, uh, Julia, let's move um, uh, Team 47 to back to the audience, and I'll start adding Team 50 for the presentation. And I see we have them here. Very nice. Please remove the call code from the... Do that momentarily. Mm -hmm. So, Team 50 should be ready. And um, Team 42.
Now, how many do you have uh, presenters? Team 50? Uh, have, have everyone five, here? Five. <clears throat> so we see two of you. Is it all or are there more? There are more. So, I will add the others. Uh -huh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I see some people put. <coughs> Yes, so we have, yeah, 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 I see some people put the numbers in their own places, but we've got them, all right, and, uh, all right, so is this all now, or are we expecting more? So we have one, two, three, four, four people from Team 50. There is one more person, uh, Angel. <clears throat> Angel. Angel, can you raise your hand so we know who you are? Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I see Angel. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should be ready to start any time now. So we have uh, 96 people uh, voted for Team 47. If anyone else wants to vote, now is your last chance. And, Now, Diego, Oliva, I'm not sure that's not your team, that's 450, not 450. Uh, Diego says that he's not letting you vote. Diego, I, I don't really know why. I mean, it seems to be working. We have over 100 people who voted. For so I'm not sure if that's an app issue, <clears throat> but I wouldn't know what to do with that, unfortunately. So um, um, I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah, I guess. It must be something local. Uh, somewhere on the screen, depending if whether you use a phone or computer, it should pop up and should allow you to vote. But if it's not doing that, um, I really don't know what to do with that. Um, all right, so um, whenever you're ready, guys, I think uh, you all have your video. Um, Inul doesn't seem to have the video and audio. Is he supposed to say something or? And anyone uh, want to share his slides? <clears throat> anyone? I mean, I'm gonna sharing the screen, but it says that Which I one? don't have permission. Yeah, so let me just a second. So it should allow you to share the screen now. Okay. All right. Um, yep, it seems to be working. Yep. Okay, so you can start my. Yep, all good, okay. all yours. Uh, so, hello, my name is Mike, and together with Kiandra, Angel, Marlia, and uh, Ian, we are Team 50. Today we will show you some of our ideas in this short presentation. First, we ident identified that X Culture Kids is part of an educational industry. However, speaking more specifically, it's part of what is known as virtual exchange industry. Our client has a really strong position in comparison with other players of the industry. It is the only one focused solely on business. Unfortunately, we have found some weaknesses such as lack of cultural training or no established community. Despite that, we believe that in this new and promising market, there is plenty of opportunities for growth and expansion. Now my colleague Ian will tell you more about our ideas. As Mike said, I'm Ian and I'm going to be talking about the proposed changes, the proposed ideas we have for X-Culture. So first off, X-Culture is facing a challenge because it needs to recruit a lot of participants. But then after recruiting these participants, X-Culture just lets them go and then recruits new participants. When we could be creating a community and we could be retaining these participants and make the community grow by itself. So the community we propose is divided in two parts, offline, which is a community that will be divided by chapters, which are determined by geographical location for convenience and purpose, but they operate virtually. So they have meetings through Zoom and stuff like that. And they host re reunions where they talk about and discuss about their learnings and their interests. Now the online community will be an on will be an on online platform where participants can talk with peers worldwide. This means that all the chapters are included in this online community and they can chat and discuss whatever their interests are. They can also access the training materials 
in this online forum. Then the community strategy we propose to create this community is recruiting uh, people by ex-culture ambassadors. Ex-culture ambassadors are basically youth who are willing to invest their time and effort in recruiting people for ex-culture. So these ambassadors go search for possible participants of this community. And once they have a certain number of interest people, they can open a chapter. Then these people who are in the chapter can participate in the project and learn the, the training materials and the resources. So once they're ready, they participate and then they come back to community. And the community will be working by a way of gaming. So that means that whoever participates in the project comes back and has a higher rank. With this process, the community can be growing by itself and possibly we can open chapters in the many chapters in the same country. So now I'll be passing the time to my teammate, Tiandra. Hello, good morning. I will be presenting on the promotional channels. So as a group, we have identified four apps, which is Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So with Google and YouTube, we have identified that we use keywords, which is like business, countries, teamwork. And for YouTube, we use fun, easy, and it should be short and precise, the video. And with Facebook and Instagram, we realize that it's more directed towards parents but Facebook and for Instagram is mainly towards teenagers and young adults and some young parents. Both of these together have a fixed price and a fixed budget which is shown on the next slide. Right so here you can see the estimated price for how much people you would like to reach based on how much you would like to spend. So now I will pass over to Angel on the message. Hello, uh, I'm Angel. And the first part we like to talk about is the message we want to convey through the advertisement, which is culture, diversity, business, and the most important one, a community. This is core value and main idea, which ultimately shows how X culture runs. In order to make connection with youth, it's best to be presented in an organic and relatable manner. Things like uh, join us in a global, diverse, and business-focused community. We we'll suggest using uh, videos to convey the message since, the, uh, since that would transfer the message accurately and make it less distant and serious. Uh, and here, or, and here we design a draft for advertisement. We use various color in the poster, which is also used in X Culture's logo to show the diversity of setting of this business program. We, st we stated main attractions of X Culture to conceive the potential customers. Uh, then I'll pass it to uh, uh, Marlia. Hi, I'm Marlia. And as for the promotional material, we have some suggestions for the website. So according to research, it takes 15 seconds to capture a person's attention. And for that reason, it is essential to have a good first impression on the client. So we think that an effective, simple, and yet attractive homepage is what could make the difference. So if we redesign the homepage to be more user-friendly friendly and simple, it could help us to get the client's attention. That is the reason why we suggested a virtual assistant. Because usually when the client accesses the website and they have a lot of doubts, to clear them, they usually have to email the admin and it could take two to three days, which could be more time consuming and could make the client lose their interest. Whereas if the virtual assistant was present, it could make the process faster and it could help us to retain the clients. And also the reason we suggested a keyword search was because it would be the best interest of the company and the clients because it would help them to access the information needed within a small period of time rather than reading through the whole document, which could be time consuming and frustrating. So now that we come to the end of our session, I would like to thank each and every one of you all for your valuable time. And um, unfortunately, because of the time limit, we could not fit everything, but if you all have any doubts, please feel free to talk to us. Thank you. Six minutes, 51 seconds, perfect timing, very good. 
Uh, there are a lot of questions and I have a lot of questions because I guess in this case, I'm the client. But there is a very good question from Professor Natalia Aknimer. So she is from um, California. She's asking, how did you, did you guys learn about Exculture? So how did we reach you? Because you are, I have no idea how we found you or you found us. Can you tell us about that? Um, so I would say that it, uh, everyone found it differently. For example, me, I found Exculture through a Facebook app. Uh -huh. Okay, oh, well, at least somebody for somebody worked, okay. How about yeah. others? How did you guys hear about us? Um, I'm more interested in entrepreneur side. So I was searching for a course for my, uh, to join college. I wanted to do something with business and entrepreneurship. So then I just came across this and it, it was interesting, so I joined it. Good to know, very well. Anyone else? Uh, actually, how my dad found X culture was an interesting was was interesting. Sorry, because he was looking at I think he was looking at LinkedIn and he found actually your profile and then he looked at the profile and he found that X culture was part of your project. So then he went to the website and he searched about everything about it and then we got convinced and mm -hmm. I enrolled. That actually brings me to the question. So in your um, slides there, you recommended we use YouTube, Instagram, uh, um, Google, and Facebook for advertisement, but you didn't mention LinkedIn. And we are not quite using LinkedIn yet. Do you think it may be a good platform? I mean, provided that it's mainly for sort of adults, not kids, but is it possible that it would be a good way to reach the parents? What's your take on that? Uh, I think that it would be a real idea because uh, a lot of people are starting to use LinkedIn and especially not just parents. I mean, people who are entrepreneurs who are quite young are starting to use LinkedIn. So I think that that could be a good platform too. We didn't consider it because uh, we were targeting more like the youth, but I, it's a good idea too. Yeah. Now, good answer. And we have several questions. So Professor Christina Robledo is asking more or less the same question than Professor Rushin Liu. And I have the same question written here about your communities. So uh, I'll try to sort of summarize those questions in one. So one, you said uh, you recommend that we create online communities uh, so that people can have sort of their own clubs in a sense. And so related to that, several questions. One, does it have to be a virtual community or would it be a good idea to have a real face-to-face -face communities? We have quite a few kids from some bigger cities. Maybe it would be a good idea if they met face-to-face -face from time to time. And then also, if it's virtual or face-to-face, -face, how exactly would it work? What exactly would they do? Uh, what, what exactly would be the activities that they will work on? What's your vision for those um, communities? Yeah. Uh, X culture. I mean, at the start, we sh we should really focus on uh, grouping people, their geographical location. Because, for example, if you make a chapter in Mexico, then those people have the same culture, and it's more, more easy to get along. But the we should focus on operating virtually. I mean, having Zoom meetings and having a, like a virtual group in Facebook or something like that, because it it will cost a lot of money to have like operate physically. But I think that given that the community could grow in the future, we could definitely start like uh, having groups that meet physically face to face. So because that's an important part, but not at the start, like more, uh, more, uh, well, after a, a while. Yeah. Good answer. And we actually did try physical communities. Indeed, it is uh, expensive to rent space and um, didn't quite work the way we expected. Uh, you also mentioned something about Exculture Ambassadors. And so the question I have for you is, again, excellent idea. I like it. I think we should try it. Uh, the question is, how exactly would it work? Like, for example, if we offered you to become the Exculture ambassadors in your cities, uh, how would you envision your position in that case? Uh, what would it take to interest you to do it? And how would you see your role? And what exactly would you, would you do? Uh, so how should it be set up with this ambassadorship uh, idea? Um, one of the main things about being an ambassador is that it offers, I mean, a strong, a stronger resume. And people who are interested in becoming ambassadors could have, I worked in X-Culture and I worked like this recruiter who went to schools and stuff like that. And basically what an ambassador does is that he carries X-Culture's name. So he represents X-Culture essentially. 
So he goes to schools and he talks to his about, look, this is the project and are you interested? And then uh, he could uh, also at some point like create the Facebook uh, page about X Culture Mexico or Instagram or something like that, for example, in my case. And uh, once he has this chapter, he has responsibilities, but obviously he has like, a, he should have this opportunity to grow and have a higher responsibilities that comes with, uh, uh, I don't know, I mean, for example, after a, a while, uh, we could have a lot of chapters in Mexico and then I could become regional leader for Mexico. So it gives you kind of like that uh, part of your resume and you have worked with. So it definitely has to be voluntary at the beginning, but then it could have like a more uh, stronger purpose, like we could, yeah. if we could say it like that. We are very interested in this idea. We still haven't figured out how to set it up, what kind of resources that would demand, but maybe even at some point we can have a separate discussion with you guys, for example, since it's one of your ideas. Uh, as I said, I'm very curious to hear from you. What would it take? to interest you in it, like, you know, what kind of resources do we need to provide to you to make it interesting for you? And then how exactly would this set up? I, I do believe in this idea. It just seems to be a little bit more complicated once you sort of dive in. Now, we have a lot of questions and a lot of good comments. Professor Gregory Kivenzer, um, Hatima Salis, um, Olga Zverevam, um, Natalia Hussein. So, but there are two more questions that I would like to ask in the interest of time. One question comes from Rafael uh, Tamashiro. So he was the one um, who was leading the team of coaches who were assigned to help the exculture teenagers. And so uh, I guess, you know, naturally he's interested. Did you use any coaching help? And if you did, uh, how do you feel about the quality of coaching help provided? And any suggestions for how we can improve our coaching program to make it more, you know, interesting and, and, and more comfortable for the future generations of exculture kids in the project? So any thoughts on that? First, I guess, did you use any coaching help? Did you ever ask coaches for advice, for guidance, for coaching? No answer means you didn't or? <laughs> okay, I don't know how to interpret that, that's okay. So, and then another question again from no. or or. Hi. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You just couldn't decide who, who's going to talk, right? <laughs> um, so I was personally the one that, because of the surveys, when we did the survey, I was really confused in the beginning. So I was the one that suggested that we get a coach. And she was really helpful and informative. And she really aided us in this whole project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was awesome. Well, good to hear that. I hope uh, uh, Rafael is happy with the answer. And then again, I'm curious to, to know the answer. So Professor John Lex is asking again, how did you structure your team cooperation and communication? So what did you use to communicate? Uh, how did it go for you? You guys have a real difficult time deciding who okay, to um, the team. In the beginning, we started with email, but as email is a lot delayed, it was kind of difficult to communicate and then a lot of people did not have WhatsApp. So then we had to eliminate that also. So then we came to the conclusion of Messenger and Facebook Messenger and it worked really well. Okay, good to know that. Thank you so much. All right, so let's take a poll. So while we are moving Team 50 back to the audience and Team 51 to the stage, let's see what the votes are. So we have uh, 40, 50 people voted. So, all right, well, thank you. Good job, guys. We'll reveal your results a little bit later. So let's start moving Team 51 in here. Um, do we have Team 51? Yes, we do. Promote to panelist, promote to panelist. And thank you so much for choosing Exculture as your clients. Uh, very useful information. I read your report and I read the other reports. Um, as always, you know, some things are sort of we thought about before, but some ideas were actually very good. <clears throat> and I really like that idea about communities and ambassadorships. So everybody talks about it. I think it's a promising idea. We just need to figure out how exactly it will be set up. So if you are from Team 51, as we are moving you to the stage, um, if there is anyone who forgot to put the number there, so raise your hand, we will add you as well. So we Later. have... Uh, Boss, please remove the Team 50 yes, co-host. Thank you. Team 51. Uh, yeah. All right. 
Hi, Wes. Good to see you guys. Good to see you all. Yeah, good to see you. Well, like, really. Oh, so, yeah. We should have these meetings more often, I guess. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. School, so yeah, of course. Can, yeah, uh, I had a couple of teams. I mean, obviously my own teams, but also a few schools here in Greensboro that participated. And so I met with those kids regularly. So over the course of the semester, we became friends, I guess, or at least we knew each other pretty well. So I wish we had that option with everybody. So. All right, so Team 51 is here. Uh, we got enough votes for Team 15. Okay, let me close that poll. And um, 51, it seems like everyone's here, right? Yeah, yes. Sorry, but could yes. I have access to it so that I can share yes. my screen? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Thank you. Um, my co-host, all right. And um, yeah, so, so what countries are in while you are still sharing the screens? Or you, you probably have a slide about that, so you'll tell us. Okay. All right. Can I see the yeah, slides? You see the screen? Yeah. So the client is the uh, company with the cool name Dart Drones. It's a um, network of schools that prepares pilots, uh, like drone pilots. So people who operate uh, unmanned flying vehicles. I guess that's the proper name. All right. So let's see if, uh, you know, what ideas you have for the company. A very good morning to Dr. Vass, the team at X Culture, and most crucially, our friends at Dart Drones. We are Group 51, and we are delighted to be able to be here today. Be it the sleek designs of Apple, the bold colors of Google, or the iconic Amazon smile, branding and design are the silent communicators. Today, we'll be covering five very crucial topics. In totality, we feel that the vibrant economies of Southeast Asia are the prime markets for long-term growth especially if you choose to employ the Greenfield Direct Investment Strategy. Furthermore, Dart Drones needs to reimagine, redefine, and reinvent its public image to elude a sense of exhilaration and excitement. Southeast Asia, an avant-garde and largely untapped market with countries such as Singapore, which is a very stable and prosperous nation, which government has just introduced the new Skills Future and Smart Nation Invest in the initiatives to pour more investment into the drone sector. Likewise, just across the straits, Malaysia's former Prime Minister, Dr. Mohamed Mahathir, has also said that he wants to transform Kuala Lumpur, the capital city, to become the drone capital of Asia. Over to you, Alia. We also looked at another international market areas like Russian market. So Russian market has a poor geopolitical climate for direct business investment due to the high level of corruption in the country. And the government are extremely protective with regards to their own markets and unwilling to open it up for foreign inventions. Another international market area is the Middle East specifically United Arab Emirates. The level of corruption there is relatively low and the inclusion of economic free zones with low taxation rates does provide a sizable incentive to companies who are willing to expand there. It is also worth noting that all businesses are required to abide by Sharia law and as such, there will definitely be a bit of friction between our American client company and local business establishment. For the subcontinent market, the same category of drones may be used, such as used for the purpose of farming. Due to the high agrarian based economy, these countries have a need for optimization of their agribusiness. And to support the system of dot drones, these sites contain high per capita, high level of English proficiency, and high feasibility of setting up training programs. With an economy growing at 6.5% and an extremely diverse geographical density in the country, China provides the perfect blend of urban and rural delivery environments to make drone delivery useful. When it comes to thinking about um, the idea of investment in the European um, continent, it is really important to think whether it is a better option to invest in Western or Eastern Europe. 
as um, through a long data analysis, my team finds that Western Europe would be a better option for um, the company since it is um, like qualified with a high GDP per capita, which is four times more than the global average. And here the company can use the security, um, like drones for security purposes as the European Union is suffering from a big um, immigration crisis. Well, for West Eastern Europe, it would not be a better option since so it has a slow pulse to via economic development and super strict commercial drone regulations. 84% of communication is visual. First impressions are everything in today's business world and your marketing materials and branding are the first thing your prospective clients are going to see. So they have to be unique, identifiable, and instantly indicative of your company culture. That's why you need to use bold visuals, a color palette that evokes a sense of reliability and a modern, minimalistic, futuristic design. 85%, that's how much more engagement and sales you can potentially tap into by using high impact video marketing with short, upbeat and concise messaging. Cue the video. Over to you, Constantine. And now I will talk a bit about a social media and why it is the best way to advertise your services and products. The amount of Instagram grew by last year was 64%. That's why our team has prepared a few Instagram post samples that will surely increase the social media engagement of the company and attract more consumers to the products and services that Journal Drawings provides. You can see the saturated colors and neat language that's used. <clears throat> Concerning the marketing sources that can be used, the following facts must be considered. Posts with videos attract twice the social engagement. Posts with included images are 6.5 times more engaging, and Facebook ads with images are create 87% of all social engagement. For the management operations that our company can use, we were thinking about the expansion strategy. And here we're talking about um, whether using the Greenfield direct investment, here consistent of the foreign direct investment into the target market, or the company can use a collaboration-based approach um, consistent of multiple partnerships with companies, um, where as for sure the drones are like complement of their services or allowing an establishment of solid um, footprint in the country. And also there's the allowance of dark drones to garner wide repertoire of contacts. Technology transfer from direct investment has an undeniable role for developing countries because promoting market access and network building between regional and global production brings transfer of knowledge and technology thus enabling the host country to build technical and organization capacity for its, for its use. The pricing model, DART drones can utilize a per course model for regular courses and employ a subscription-based model with an all-inclusive pass for those enthusiasts and professionals to cater for a wide array of potential clients. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Vas, I think you're muted. Yeah. I think you've muted. Uh, oh, uh, Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So looking at the comments and the uh, questions, um, everybody commented on your level of, of, of enthusiasm and energy. So you definitely were a little bit more exciting than some other teams, at least as far as the four. So uh, several people said, love the energy, love the excitement. So that's very good, very good. So let's see if we have any questions. Uh, the professors are probably still typing up the, uh, the uh, comments and the feedback and the suggestions. Uh, so, but while we're waiting for the comments about the presentation, 
Um, so again, there is the presentation was great. Could you please elaborate on why you want to use Instagram? I think that Instagram is the social media platform that's most well used and most prominent today. If a high growth rate, last year it was 67%, Instagram is the social media platform that is gonna take off. And through Instagram, you can potentially tap into influencers, people with a large social media following who can further promote and collaborate with you to expand your services, expand your media presence, such that you have more customers and more clients to deal with. Yeah, very good. And I think we actually have here the company representative, Christopher Speicher. So let's see if he can talk. So uh, he probably has some comments and questions for you. Um, another anonymous at ND is saying the presentation was very engaging. I have a question about why a certain markets chosen such as SEA. Was it supposed to be United Arab Emirates or SEA? Um, uh, I think obvious choice at a first glance. I would like to hear an elaboration. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Uh, I think SEA here would, be, uh, would represent Southeast Asia because oh, there was a target yeah, yeah. So for some market that, that we would, chose. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I think for the companies, that, uh, for the nations that we looked at, which is Singapore and Malaysia, there's a very favorable social, economic, environment, and culture scape because the Singaporean corporate tax is only 17%. So it's a very good opportunity for you to come here and set up your regional headquarters, which is a very good plan for expansion. Furthermore, the government will also be giving subsidies if your local sub subsidiary company has a 30% local shareholding percentage, which means that when you come to Singapore, and if you have 30% local shareholders, you'll be able to tap into a lot of government money, which by providing to advance the drone industry in our country. Yep. Um, adding, up, adding up one point to what August has said, um, we also looked at multiple um, like regulations are some countries that have some drones regulations. So it would be really hard for the company to invest there. So that's also what led us to like think deeply about the choice or like the market like choice for the company. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And there is actually a question about that from Professor Rushin Liu. So again, Team 51, Great Energy, based on this client's case, legal regulations are one of the major challenges. Different countries have various drone regulation, drone industry regulations. Based on your research, which country has the most favorable legal environment for dark drones to enter? I think this question is very complex, and you're looking into the specifics of what your regulations want. Uh, I know that in Singapore, the company F Drone got the approval to start their drone delivery trial in the 19th of February this year. So in Singapore, there is a very, not say lax, but there is a very cooperative government who is able to provide this sort of legal clearance if you need to come to Singapore and create a business. Yeah, just to add up, there is a big difference between the regulations uh, for uh, drones for recreational use and for commercial use. So you must take that into consideration as well, because some countries uh, have uh, lower regulations for drones uh, for recreational use and um, for instance, my country, Bulgaria, uh, has strong regulations for drones for commercial use, so it's not the best choice um, to apply that here, yeah. Makes sense. We still have questions coming in, but again, let me ask the same question um, about the process you used. So you have here Singapore, Bulgaria, I, I lost track of the countries. You have like five, six, seven different countries. So how did you structure your communication and leadership? Did you have a formal elected leader? Uh, how did you divide up the workload and, and how did you communicate? Um, I can answer this question. So basically, yeah. Augustus was kind of like um, an indirect like leader and basically we were all working together, like communicating um, by using Google Hangouts and also having a WhatsApp group. And um, we were also having a Google Drive where we um, we were taking meeting notes for at each meeting and to that and also organize it through um, like documents like in Google Drive and we were just like uh, assigning parts of of the um, the assignment that we had uh, weekly and on Sunday and each person will work on it and then we will try to edit it together basically and we share our opinions and views about it. Good job. Yeah. And so what countries do you have? So you have uh, Singapore, Russia, Bulgaria. Uh, what other countries do you have there? Pakistan, um, India, China. Well, you have the whole world. Okay, well, that's yeah. very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. 
All right, and in, in the interest of time, so uh, Myra, uh, Alicia, I see your questions, but in the interest of time, let's move on. We will forward the question to the team later. And um, let's do the quick um, polling of the quality of your presentation. So Tim, uh, team 61 next, and I think that's a university team, and then team 164, another university team goes next, and that will conclude today's um, round of presentations. So um, Julia, let's move people in and out and um, the audience is voting, so we have about 70 votes. Very good, okay. Um, uh, Christopher, Chris uh, Spiker, I'm not, okay, well, that's fine, yeah. So I, I just wanted to see if the company representative wanted to say something, but yeah, that's perfectly fine. So, uh, Team 61, so get ready, guys. We will add you momentarily. Uh, how many people do we expect from Team 61? Because I see, I think, only one or two of them. I oh, know there are a few. Okay. Okay. So Daniel, Camille, are there more of your team members? I see several people raise their hands. Uh, Savannah, yeah, okay. Uh, so if there are some one more, please yeah, raise no, your no, hand. Really so, but, uh, uh, this is us. I, this I, is all of us. Christopher Spiker is back in the conference room. Christopher, if you wanted to say anything on the previous presentation, let us know. Otherwise, we'll yeah, sure. Can yeah, you hear me, boss? Yeah, go ahead. So thank, thank you very much uh, for a, a small company in the U.S. Uh, that's trying to break into the international markets. This was very, very helpful. Uh, and I really, really appreciate the effort that your your team put into this. Um, our our issue is bandwidth. You know, we we have to really narrow down and select one place and focus like like an arrow directly on on one target at a time. We we're still relatively small by the drone industry standards. We're big, but by by industry standards of any particular industry, we're pretty small. So we're trying to. Uh, we're trying to take the right steps, and particularly right now, it's a you know it's a very very uh, difficult time for business. Uh, and we're you know we had a great online platform which really really got us through this uh, pandemic issue. Um, so we're trying to figure out the next steps. I I um, I think our steps will probably be an English uh, speaking country just because of the translation costs of the mountains and mountains of documents and data and and classes that we have. Um, so could they pick out one English speaking country that would probably be the easiest, best target to make a recommendation for? What was that again? One, uh, one English speaking country that would be the, the most likely best target uh, for us to focus on. Uh, in the yes, next so the, the problem is that we already moved that team out. So uh, Tim, oh, okay. one then. so the question for you is, can you recommend one single English speaking market? And so, oh, they started typing here. So, okay, they started typing here and they recommend Singapore and India. So uh, that's apparently the recommendation. So uh, yeah. uh, would you consider Singapore. going to Asia? I mean, Singapore is- Absolutely, uh, India, is, India is clearly on our, our, uh, our list. Um, we, we hadn't considered Singapore, but uh, we definitely will at this point. So I really want to thank the team, if, and hopefully I'll be able to get in touch with them later and talk to them more specifically. Wonderful. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So then, uh, Team uh, 61, uh, which one of you will be sharing the slides if you're using Me, slides? I'm going to. So let me just add you here as a co-host, and that should allow you to share your slides. So we have the votes for the previous team, their results, and uh, you guys, whenever you're ready, so all yours. Okay, so uh, okay. okay, one sec. Sorry, let me fix something on my screen real quick. Sorry about that. Well, good morning and evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are Team 61, and we're here today to present to you the MatchPlat International Expansion Plan, which we've been working on since March. This has been a really great challenge for us and will be a great investment opportunity for MatchPlat and investors, and we're very excited to share it with you. 
So first I'd like to go through and introduce all of our team members. First, we have Daniel Sanchez from Brazil, Camille LaBruce from France, myself, Savannah Olmsted from the United States of America, and Natalia Patino from Colombia, but she could not be here today. And our team has a very diverse international background. We also have a very strong experience, both strategic consultancy and entrepreneurship. Now I'd like to go through and discuss Matchplat. Matchplat is a rising startup that has already established itself in Italy and it's a B2B matchmaking platform. It uses artificial intelligence to find customers the best partners possible and it really leverages a global database of almost 300 million companies. It's a growing startup and it has successfully raised about 1 million euros with crowdfunding alone and has gained almost 60 investors so far. Oh, you're on mute, Daniel. <laughs> so analyzing Meshplat's market, we can see that the major traditional firms are being challenged by a number of uh, up and rise startups. And Meshplat may really be the startup that is going to disrupt and win this market. That's because they have a very versatile solution. They are able to scale up very quickly by relying on artificial intelligence and smart data. And they have been very successful at the most inexpensive end of the market working with SMEs and startups. But in order to face these giants, first, start, uh, Matchplat needs to establish itself among the, star the their startups. And the best way to do so is going abroad. That's because by going abroad, Matchplat is going to uh, have access to a much denser pool of custom cons consumers that is going to definitely raise the revenues. Also, there are several activities that can be standardized and enjoy scale economies. For example, by centralizing the R&D functions in Italy, Matchplat can take advantage of its intangible solutions by offshoring only the front-end activities, which would also provide a best fit to the local customer needs. Also, by adopting this strategy, Matchplat can deploy and start their operations remotely, which is great, especially on COVID-19 times. So in order to do, best, to do the best strategic step, we need to thoughtfully think about uh, where to go. And that's why we analyzed hundreds of cities according to several criteria, such as current and potential market size, cultural distance, and regulatory environment. And we came up with three main targets. Germany uh, as the Munich city in Germany, and then New York and Tokyo as our American and Asian hub. But defining where to go is only the first step. The real tricky part is getting there. And that's why we thought about adopting wholly owned subsidiaries in order to get to these places. And the idea here is to uh, enjoy that these markets have a very high potential. They have low and manageable risks. And our main uh, asset here is intellectual property. So we need to protect it in any way we can. Also being part of a local incubator or startup hub will definitely help us. And well, Germany is just the best place for us to start our journey. Why do you ask? It's the biggest market in Europe. It has a great concentration of our main uh, customer target, that is SMEs. It has a very stable and efficient regulatory environment, a very fostering ecosystem for startups, and it's relatively close to Italy, both geographically and culturally. Though if we know for sure that Germany is the place to invest, to invest, uh, we have to know what type of client are there and what are the clients for Matchplat. That's why we made a personal analysis and we um, defined that uh, the main and the easy one to uh, convince was a profile like Klaus. Klaus is the CEO of an innovative startup. There are plenty of inno innovative startup in um, the Munich region. So it's a really good one. Though the most common one is a profile like Wolfgang. Wolfgang is the CEO of a family SME um, and is, most, is more difficult to convince. That's why we came up with a bottom-up approach by trying to reach uh, a profile like Begum. Begum is the head of sale in the um, uh, SME of Wolfgang and she's also a digital native so she can be easily uh, convinced by Matchplat and then Matchplat can be improved and in uh, implemented in the old firm. To read Jim, we made a three-phase uh, marketing campaign. First, Matchplat will have to uh, adapt its content to make it more quantitative as the German ways want, to, want it, but also just to translate it in German. Then um, Matchplat will have to make a press release to make his international 
internationalization known and also uh, to contact its uh, existing clients to make to to make them aware of the going abroad process and then a more common um, marketing phase with campaign on traditional but also social media uh, though we for marketing we also want to ms connect um, uh, solution which is a match cloud solution and to develop a b2b social network with it and also uh, to um, address a new demand to school and university and then wider the pool of consumer of uh, match flat so in this presentation we've expressed many benefits but let's go back to one of the most important and that's the numbers in the most conservative scenario getting into germany would cost investors around 250,000 euros and provide an incredible 166 percent internal rate of return which is almost unmatched this full calculation in addition to other analysis is provided in our appendix if you have questions we can reference it later In addition, this plan will benefit both MatchPlat and, and its investors by providing a scalable and transportable business model, opportunities to reach customers in untapped markets, leverage powerful intellectual property assets to expand with reduced costs, and springboard into future expansions with a strong start in Germany. So in order to think big, we really need to think globally. Do you want to become a global leader with us? Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. Now I have a very practical question right away. How did you make those pictures move? Are those GIF files or? Uh, oh. That's with Camille. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Sorry, I can point. It's a different. Uh, okay, sorry. That's a neat trick. Uh, I, I want to use that. Uh, thanks to Canva. Thanks to Canva, you there is a possibility to make a moving image. Very good. Yeah. Uh, so we have some comments already. So Dominic Nim um, Alim, who is actually your competitor, Team 164, but he admits that you did nice IRR, IRR, whatever that is. Love the numbers. What are the key assumptions that you had incorporated in order to achieve an IRR of 166% or 850K euros? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, can I? Uh, share my screen again. Yeah, yeah, just a second. Yeah, yeah, it should work, right? Uh, okay. So, while Camille is putting up, um, I'll start explaining our exemptions. Of course, that it is uh, a raw estimation, but we try to do uh, the best assumption uh, to adopt the best assumption possible in order to have a, a very uh, a, a, well. Oh, okay. Here it is. So basically, uh, first we try to. Um, estimate the size of the market. So we did this by analyzing the number of SMEs in Italy and the number of SMEs in Bavaria. And we made uh, a correlation according to the revenues that we generated. But of course, the company is an Italian one. So uh, we cannot think that we would be able to achieve this whole uh, penetration market that we have in Italy uh, in the Bavarian region. So that's why we did um, a, a correction so we we said that the the biggest market share that we could have was only half of it and uh and this would be like our potential market and we scaled the according to the entry uh on the the follow the first five years how we would achieve this potential market so we were very conservative uh, if i'm not mistaken we would only have uh here we would have like 10 percent of this reduced uh, potential target, and on the and this is how we estimated our revenues, and then we did the several uh, calculations in, in order to understand our expenses that understood both uh, SGNAs, uh, the investment costs, marketing costs. Uh, I mean the whole the whole thing, everything that we need to consider in order to enter the market. Yeah. And I think you see the comments and questions, so a lot of compliments coming your way. There is also um, a very um, uh, good question from Manuel Ramirez. Great presentation. Can you generally explain how was the investment assessment made? I think this, this is a kind of complicated question, but if you can give a quick summary. Of course. So if there's another slide for this. Uh, so basically, we tried to assess the main costs. Uh, gladly, uh, Matchplet provided us with several 
uh, estimations on their investments. So we could have uh, some ground on it. Uh, so based on the Italian, uh, on the, the German wages that we took from a, a site called Glassdoor that really allows us to have a, a notion on, on the wages, we provided uh, an estimate on the number of uh, employees that we would need to hire and their, of course, their wage. Uh, we also did some research on uh, spaces for, for us to rent and we arrived this with this 5K uh, for our, start, uh, our starting operations. We also estimated the marketing expenses by really uh, analyzing the options and these options would be um, optimized by our CPC calculator dashboard that is on the report. And we were very lenient on the general operation expenses because we know uh, that since it's the first time that the company is moving out, there's certainly going to be lots of costs that we cannot account for. And it's very important to say that all these costs are indexed. So every time that on the following years, uh, since we are growing our operations, these costs are also uh, being increased. Very good, yeah. Um, again, I would like to ask you a general question, uh, not so much about communication, but rather, what was the greatest challenge working as a team? So you have quite a few countries in your team. What was your biggest challenge and how did you overcome it? I think we had two major problems. Uh, one was the investment or the involvement of one of the uh, team members. So we had to do without it since he left the group at the beginning. And then we had also uh, Natalia who had some, um, or, I mean, we had some problem with some uh, team members who didn't speak well English. So we had to do double, re uh, double meetings, first in English. And since Daniel and I, we speak Spanish, we could like do a double meeting to, um, uh, for her to stay in, in, the, in the project. Hmm, that's interesting, yeah, and so I, you have like double translation going on, so yeah, very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, no, and I'd like to add on, I was very thankful to have uh, Daniel and Camille, and they both speak Spanish, so I am, I am from America, and I don't speak Spanish, so sorry, <laughs> but um, I was, I, it was very helpful to be able to have a really, like, we, we, we balanced off on our strengths and weaknesses, I think, and that helped a lot, and another issue that we had was definitely scheduling times, that was kind of like, I think that's an issue across the board, but um, we had a lot of, like, either they were meeting very late, or I was meeting, like, 6 a.m., <laughs> so it was definitely a challenge to overcome but you know we we did it we made it work so i'm very happy and it was good it was a good transition especially with everything else going wrong yeah, very good yeah and we still have keep um have questions that are coming your way so again i'll forward them to you in the interest of time uh so but yeah good presentation so let's do the numbers um so the audience can now evaluate your performance and uh we have one more team left so julia let's start moving so team 61 back to the audience, team 164 to the stage. Uh, team 164 had to wait the longest, and not only because they go last in the sequence of presentations, but also because it's a team from the early track. So they started in January and were done by March. So they had to wait for like three months to do this presentation. So for them, that's, that's a big wait, but uh, I'm very happy to see the commitment and so that they're still on and they still would like to go uh, on with the presentation. Great job. So team 164, so you should be all in now or almost all of them. So let's um, just let me move a couple more people here and um, we should be ready to go. So and if there are any other people from team 164 who are presenting, please raise your hand. But I think that's all. So other also, also, can I can I ask yeah. one more? I have a small talk with Jessica from the Good Earth Oils. Uh, mm -hmm. She bring uh, us her apologize because Australia is uh, yes. ha have a very late time now. But she's waiting for the recordings and she waves greetings for all of the team. So mm -hmm. guys, good luck. Thank you. Yes, in Australia, in that time zone, that's probably what, like 1 a.m. now or 2 a.m. So, I mean, obviously the time zone difference doesn't help us here, but we will send the recording. Hopefully we'll get direct feedback from Good, Good Earth Oils uh, later on. All right, so let's finish the polling for Team 61. All right, very good numbers. And uh, Team 164, are there only two of you or there will be more? 
Yes, two. Two, wonderful. Okay, yeah, more efficient that way. Uh, and so we need to share so that you can share the slides, right? Yeah. Dominic, we cannot hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Oh, we can hear you now, yes. Yeah. Right, which yeah. one of you will be sharing the slides? Me. Dominic. I'll be sharing it. Okay, all right. Just give me a second. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for sticking around and uh, both today, but also after the early track was over. So <laughs> I know it's been a long time and I know many people have already started thinking about something else. So it's very nice to see you guys still here. So, all right. Okay, well, ready when you are. Okay, hold on. All right, so good morning and evening, ladies and gentlemen in New York time. So my, uh, today, our group Team 164 will be sharing with you our business proposal for an international expansion into the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Hereafter, we'll be referring Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as KSR. So my name is Dominic and I'm, I'm an undergraduate from Singapore. Today, I'll be, I have the honor to present alongside with me, Lisa Castro from Columbia University, America. So who is GEO? G Good Up Oil is basically a major company manufacturing co-pressed canola oil and olive oil. They mainly operate in Australia and with their recent re retail failure under Edwards Oil in Australia, the need to expand and grow internationally becomes ever more pertinent. So why KSR, you might be wondering. Mainly due to three main reasons. One, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is one of the wealthiest states in the Middle East. And two, recent consumer trends in Saudi Arabia is shifting towards healthier cooking oil option. And this is mainly driven due to social media influences. And three, import trends. Recent trends indicates to us that KSR is opening up its, its domestic economy to foreign players. And this can be seen from the trend above. So now I'll be passing my time to Liza to share more on this SWOT analysis. Okay, so we use the SWOT analysis to evaluate the internal and external environment of GEO by identifying the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. These are some of the most significant uh, ones that we found. GEO is a leader in technology to develop refined cold pressed canola oil, 100% natural, which is rare. Some of the weaknesses are that the company does not have a strong marketing approach, and uh, also canola oil has a negative perception by the public, uh, which is why some users might want to use alternative sources of fat. But with the right information, this could uh, significantly change. Also, the people of South Arabia are becoming uh, more health-oriented, which is a huge opportunity for us to uh, enter into this new market. Uh, the image that you see on the screen are the three pros that we think uh, are the best option for us to enter this new market due to its uh, characteristics. Okay. Uh, so for the pro development, we decided to uh, kind of change uh, the, the look of it. Uh, as you can see on the screen, this is what it would look like when translated to the, to the language of the country. Okay, so now I'll be sharing with you guys on the marketing strategy that our group would like to propose the good of oil. So, as mentioned previously in the executive summary, um, social media influences are one of the driving factors within the, shift, the recent shifting consumer trends in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And this is the reason why we would like to end, end, uh, tap on to this social media influences. And three main social media influences channels in which we'll be promoting our product, namely YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And this is basically the video to show us how do we actually set up an account and how do we actually promote our materials and our collaterals via these three main social medias. Now, this will share with you the message as well as the collaterals they'll be using. Okay, so our message focuses on two uh, things, the nutritional value and the or animal love. So the main message is nutritional benefits. It helps reduce cholesterol and it helps reduce skin problems. This addresses some of the misconceptions that people have uh, as of the nutritional value of canola oil. And the sub message is, uh, it focuses on bringing life to the brand by connecting it to animals. We propose connecting it to, uh, connecting it to may make the buying experience more appealing. And I mean, who doesn't love animals? Um, the collaterals that you now see on the screen are a sample of what it would look like, um, ideally uh, if translated into the Arabic uh, language to assimilate to the cultural tendencies of this country. Okay, 
So now I'll be sharing with you guys on the operations management, i.e. the practical part of our business proposal, how we actually enter into Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That'll be through this medium called the Gulf Food Show. It's an annual exhibition uh, channel in which uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia holds annually to market their domestic market for foreign players. So basically foreign companies go to this exhibition and demonstrate or showcase their products to Saudi Arabians. Uh, we'll be using a franchising model and mainly due to two reasons. One, we're not big enough and we're a new entry entrant into a, a totally new market in the Middle East. And hence, we do not have the opportunity or the leverage to enter into a joint venture or in alliances. The reason why we choose franchising and not licensing is because we would like to protect the brand and retain control. And this is essential for us because we want to reposition our brand away from the historical horse feed produce that Jiro is currently attached to in Australia. And this will help us to market our product much more effectively in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Two main companies in which we will be collaborating with, Noon and Lulu Hypermarket. Now, oh, Liz will um, share with us the shipping. Yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so um, the logistics is a very detail-oriented topic and it's very extensive. So if you're interested in knowing more about the details of it, uh, tra the trade regulations and certifications, you are more than welcome to look at our proposal or ask any questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, thanks Liz. So now we'll be sharing with you guys on a price point, final slide, before we enter into the conclusion. So two main strategies in which we'll be entering uh, KSR via one short-term pricing strategy, two long-term pricing strategy. The short-term pricing strategy we'll be using will be penetration pricing, and this will be done in two phases. One, the first half will be a 10% discount, and the second half will be a 30% discount. Why do we not use a pricing penetration pricing for a long-term strategy? Simply because we want to reposition our brand away from the historical horse feed produced towards a more luxury uh, cooking oil option uh, market. And that is where our pr premium pricing comes into play. Uh, average price point in which uh, currently, Co-pressed canola oil is in uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is about $7 per litre. The triple plus indicates that this price point does not take into consideration uh, government tax, import tax, as well as the premium we'll be giving. So in conclusion, our present proposal aims to target three main areas. One, the challenge. Two, the opportunities. And three, how do we seize the opportunity? First, the challenge. The challenge is that the retail market in Australia proved to be difficult and unsuccessful. And hence, it, the, need to ever, the need to expand internationally is ever more important. Secondly, the opportunities in KSR proved to be increasing and growing. Thirdly, we, we would like to seize the opportunity via three main methods, label changes, social medias, as well as the franchising model that we talked about. With that, we have come to the end of our presentation. We open the floor to any questions. Right on time. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, all right, let's see if we have any questions here. So um, let me go to the Q&A and any comments. Um, so we have a question or a comment, uh, a comment and a question from Professor uh, Rushin Liu from um, California, I believe, right? Uh, uh, sorry, Florida. Uh, great work, Dominic and Lizeth, uh, for sticking to the end. Uh, your proposal is very thorough to cover all bases of entry strategy. Uh, who are the current competitors in Saudi Arabia? What's the competitor's pricing? Uh, you want to go on? Do you want me to take it? Yeah. Okay, so the current uh, competitors that we have talked about are basically uh, Lulu Market and Loon, and they are the ones that we would like to collaborate with. So uh, yeah, their price point currently, it's about uh, three to four uh, uh, American dollars. The more premium ones, those e-commerce, which is Noon, uh, price it at about 11, 10 dollars. That's why the average price point is about seven American dollars. Um, they are currently um, not, so their co-pressed canola oil differs from ours is simply because of the fact that our co-pressed canola oil is organically grown and their canola oils are not uh, organically grown. So basically they import the canola seed and then they manufacture it in Saudi Arabia. So it's not that, I guess, uh, healthy in that sense. Um, slight, slight difference, I guess, but uh, price point wise, uh, we would like to price it slightly more expensive simply because uh, we're going for a more luxury market. Very good. Uh, again, a lot of praise in the comments, Professor Christina Robledo, uh, Olga Zvereva not only provides um, a lot of, how should I put it, we have a competition for the best presenter, and I'm not sure who's going to win that competition, but I know who wins the competition of the most thorough feedback, and that's definitely uh, Professor Zvereva. So thank you so much for those comments. We will definitely share them to the uh, with the teams. 
there is a question from Professor Gregory Kibbenzer, and he's actually in this area, so he knows something about pricing. So why use penetration pricing when the good, uh, good earth oils are in fact a premium product? So do you think- Very good, very good question. Yeah. That's actually a very good question. Uh, Liz, you want to take it or do you want me to take it? Go ahead, you later. Okay, uh, so basically a uh, reason why we uh, did the penetration pricing was because the fact that we, we mentioned that we are a very small company in a totally new market. So there is no Western players at all in the Middle East, simply because of the political as well as the social risk that it involves. Um, but we feel that it, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is relatively safer than any other states within the Middle East. And uh, currently, yeah, like I said, uh, even Am I don't think Amazon actually operates and based on my research, uh, Amazon don't like sell any cold-pressed canola oil and there's no really no, not much Western players currently. So in order for us to penetrate a, a very, um, I guess, culturally strong market it, like Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, using a penetration pricing might and incentivize them to gain traction in the short term. And once we have enough consumer base, then we'll move towards a more premium pricing. But that takes a long time before we can actually increase that price because consumer's reference point, price point would take time to get adapted to the increase of the pricing. Yeah. So that's... Another, okay, very good. And another question from the same professor about the shipping method. So you said that you want to use air shipments. Why not? It's, an, it's a heavy product, I mean, oil. So why not use regular sea cargo shipments? Uh... That's a, that's a so, good question. Uh, yeah, you go for it. Um, as, as we're moving to this new um, market, um, we are establishing that it's going to take us a long time to, to just move us a large amount of, of product. So to start off, we decide to turn a through air because it's simply easiest since um, the, this, this country is located basically in like the most travel place in yeah. to the airlines and so it's it's just more convenient until we decide to uh, to um i guess um it becomes larger to the point that it's more feasible to do cargo wonderful yep I, I agree. <laughs> so we still have questions coming in but what i would like to do now is before we announce the winners we have a lot of professors in the audience. Some of them have been very helpful with the feedback, with the questions. So professors, if you have a microphone and a camera and you would like to provide some feedback uh, live, please raise your hand and we will add you to the panel and maybe you can provide feedback not only to this team, but in general on the presentations that you've heard today. And I see we have here Professor Cristina Robledo, so we'll probably have more. So. Um, really would like to hear more comments and then we will add more students to the panel who presented. And so we'll have everyone in the room for the announcement of the winners. And I'll finish up my math while we get the feedback. So Christina, you should be able to speak now, right? Gregory, you should be able to speak too. So um, please unmute your microphones once ready and let's try, uh, really would like to hear your comments on the presentations you've seen today. Um, Greg, it seems like you are ready. So would you like to say a few words about the eight presentations you've seen today? Hello, hello, is it working? And Christina, we can see you as well. So unmute your microphones and whenever ready, go ahead, tell us a little bit more what you think about the presentations today. Christina, ready, Greg? Hi, hello, yeah, can you listen? listen? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so hello everybody. I am a Professor Cristina Robledo from Universidad Eafit in Colombia. And I am very happy I woke up this early on a Saturday morning to listen to your presentations. I am so happy to see the effort you have put into your work and the, um, the, the school kids did an amazing job. Like I, I would say, like graduate students need to look up and watch out for them because they are doing a great, great job. I was absolutely amazed of, of what they did. So first of all, I would like to uh, highlight the, like the kind of slides you all did. Your presentations were very neat and most of you did a very good job avoiding reading. Uh, nevertheless, some of you get a little bit uh, scripted 
when using slides and it's it is a much, good word yeah that's a <laughs> it's much more fun to listen to you when you answer the questions so try to be like that even when when you are presenting because there is so much more a uh, I guess, uh, ability to keep the attention of, of your audience and, and to, make, to make yourself believed. Like we can really believe what you are saying when you are out of the script. So I really like that. So congratulations everyone. I really enjoyed uh, the presentations. It is a very cold morning out here. Well, for Colombian standards, of course. <laughs> but but keep, keep on the work. Uh, I can see a very bright future ahead for all of you. Thank you so much, Christina. Very good feedback. Greg, would you like to say a few words? What's your impressions? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me tell you that uh, I was listening with uh, lots of interest because one of my really strong uh, students uh, presented for this same company in uh, the second half of the semester. That is why I know a little bit about the company. I know uh, a bit about uh, the, uh, that team uh, strategy and it was interesting to listen to your presentation. Uh, one of the things which uh, I found and uh, let me tell you that it is pretty common to many of my students. Uh, students think that the budget is unlimited and even a small company can afford literally any expense in uh, advertising, in promotion, uh, in uh, mm, a different uh, delivery and other charges. This is one of the uh, common omissions because in most com uh, uh, in most situations and this is a very small company with very tight budget which is uh, run by by farmers uh, they they have limited resources they have money which is tight the supply of money is tight that is why penetration to another market should be very strongly justified not because they do not want this but because you have to uh, clearly uh, plot the uh, the strategic plan for them. And one of the things which you mentioned that if uh, Saudi Arabia is a country where uh, oil is uh, uh, a frequent component uh, of uh, different meals, this means that people there value good oil and value healthy oil. In the situation uh, which we are talking about good oils, this is a cold pressed oil, which is the healthiest type of making oil for, for food. So if the health components are added to the marketing campaign, to the advertising, then the premium price, I believe, might be the best way to go because you cannot start with low price and then increase. Markets hate this. You can start with a high price yeah. and then gradually lower it or add some discounts that's a, a totally different ball game because discounts in the minds of uh, consumers are temporary so discounts could be used tactically but if you start with the penetration price you cannot go to premium at any time that is why uh, this and this is a common thing which uh, again I, I don't want to say uh, this is uh, your particular fault because most of my students think oh we will start getting into the market and then we will increase the the margin no this is not the way and as consumers you would probably hate this if uh, the price uh, which was listed yesterday at x tomorrow uh, will be at x plus y you will say why uh, it was not uh, it is the same product why should i pay more uh, and uh, uh, this would be a big turnoff for the customers that is why i, I I listened to your presentation, I liked it. I uh, like the way you um, put together your um, overall picture of the company and the way you suggested the company can market itself. But there are certain practical items which I want just to bring to your attention, not to diminish the value of your research, not to reduce the, uh, the effort which you put there, but uh, for your future, because this is the learning environment. And as one of my uh, colleagues said, 
sometimes you succeed and sometimes uh, you learn. Yeah. Very good. good. Very good. Yeah, thank you. And I completely agree on the pricing strategy. So unless it's a different product later on, maybe like higher end, it would be very hard to go from low to high. So always easier to go the other way around. So we have a few more professors here. Uh, John Lax, Olga Zvereva. So would you like to share your feedback? And meanwhile, uh, Julia, let's uh, add all of the team members who presented back to the room so that they can be sort of here live for the announcement of the winners. We got the numbers. So John, Olga, would you like to add a few words? Yes, probably. You know, I have uh, actually, um, and uh, I would like to make sort of, uh, of a summary. First of all, uh, I'm impressed by your presenting skills. Uh, and actually, uh, due to the majority of the teenagers were like uh, who took participation in this uh, teen program, so that's really great. Uh, my real advice actually for you would be to avoid reading because uh, even a simple thing which you tell uh, like by yourself, uh, it makes it all much, much more interesting. And uh, definitely uh, rather than you are saying very, very general thing, you know, because all people uh, use majorly the same uh, devices, majorly the same uh, contacts, channels. Uh, therefore, uh, you always need to pick up something really interesting, you know, and, um, and definitely to give a sort of your positive emotions to all of the identity is one of me. It works. So, uh, also, I would like to think actually during uh, yes our COVID situation. You know, you demonstrated a great uh, let's say stamina. <laughs> yes, to to resist to this all and to present the final result. So, thank you. It was interesting and uh, uh, focus uh, on research issues which you present when you present and uh, always think what would be the result. So, what is the outcome? And uh, how much does it cost for anyone and for, like everywhere? Because uh, when you prepare uh, something, even a simple thing, you always uh, know there is time, there are people, uh, actually funds, and uh, would be the lump sum to go for it. Thank you. Thank so you. this is very my good. And Professor John, would... he had very good questions about the process, and I like that very much because exculture is not so much an exam; it is an exercise in collaboration. And so while we do focus on the actual project that the teams complete, uh, that the way they get to that result is probably even more important. So any comments, any questions, uh, John? Yes, that's um, exactly where I, I want to pick up is, first of all, I do want to say everybody did an amazing job and uh, you should all be very proud of yourselves and tell your parents that they should be very proud of you because <laughs> you guys just rocked today um, and gave up part of your Saturday. That's pretty cool. What I want to ask you about is within your own classes, your local classes, did you find this was more of a competitive uh, kind of environment or collaborative environment? So the other students that were in your local classes, uh, how did you guys work with them or did you? Um, so I'm mean, just interested so I can compare it to how my, my students behave during the project. I can answer. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, so at my school, I go to Florida Gulf Coast University. My professor is uh, Daniel Roddick. Um, he, um, you know, f since the beginning of the semester, he he really expressed how important um, the exposure to the to the project was, um, given the 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 amount of people that have been that have participated, the co the the companies that have participated in the project as well. Um, He's had multiple students who have been the top eight in the past as well. Um, but it was more like, for me, I'm a very competitive person. He made it seem like a, like a I guess like a, comp like a competition, but more so like a learning experience so that we could expose ourselves um, to the international market um, if we want to be um, international business majors, if that makes sense. It does. Anybody else? Oh, don't be shy, guys. <laughs> oh, come on now, guys. <laughs> so, um, I go to uh, the University of the District of Columbia, and my professor is Anshu Arnara. Oh, yes. She um, made a point to, to really make us understand how important it is for all of us to uh, learn to work with 
different people uh, across the world with different uh, issues such as the timing, uh, culture differences. So what she would do is that she would um, uh, take a class period to kind of talk, let us talk about what was going on in our experiences and compare it to each other and see maybe if we had an issue, how we could resolve it better. And she also made a point to sort of make it a little bit competitive by uh, talking about our scores and how we could talk to people to make it um, better for everyone. And yeah, it was, it was very interesting and I'm very grateful for that. Was there time set aside in class for you and your classmates to talk about your projects and what you were doing and how the process was going? Yes. From anybody. Anybody. Yeah, there was a there was a there were a few classes where we were able to um you know like discuss like who our teams were, like um like how the presentation or how the project was gonna work out. Um but all in all, like it was more of like a something to see if we could achieve on our own. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody, right, so appreciate it. I Anybody think... else? Any, any other comments before we announce the winners? Yeah, I would like to thank everyone, guys. Extend my greetings to all team members. You've done an amazing job. I was really impressed with all the effort you could put with your presentations. Great job in structuring presentation. Amazing job with animation and use of graphics. I'm sure that every professor here would agree that we can learn from you guys in these terms nowadays very in-depth uh, analysis and knowledge of various marketing channel. Really, really good job. And I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Good luck, keep it up, and just, you know, kind of pursue your ideas and goals. Good, Dr. good job, Harris, guys. One yeah. more, very, very quick point. One piece of advice, stay in touch. Yeah. So you guys have established uh, these connections to four or five people from all over the planet. Don't waste this opportunity. Stay in touch with one another, as particularly as you graduate and transition to the workforce. You never know when you're going to need a friend someplace. So don't, uh, you know, whether you do it by social media or sending me, however you do it, stay in touch. And we've had teams that formed companies and actually have pretty successful business now. We even have one couple that met through the, uh, you know, through Exculture as, as team members, and then they got married. So last <laughs> year, so we have one couple. So no Exculture kids yet. But talking about dedication, so John, you said thank you for giving part of your Saturday. So for Natalia, she's in California, so she had to wake up at 6 a.m. to be here with us. So that that's a dedication, you know, on Saturday. I don't know how how she. Does. But anyway, and today so is Danielle's birthday. Oh, especially, yeah, that, yeah, happy birthday, yeah, yeah, that's very important. And if I could make a comment, uh, go ahead, please. To, to all these young people, um, very impressive, obviously, as you heard from professors and uh, company representatives, uh, the fact that you just did not present based on what someone without maybe a college degree could talk about. It is not just your opinions. You talked your research based on models, based on framework. Uh, obviously, it shows that you have college education. You can think, you can identify problems, you can analyze in a systematic way. Uh, these are all very good skills that you've developed and you must be proud of your accomplishments and I'm sure your teachers and professors are also very pleased and impressed. Um, I always say our students do all the hard work and we get credit for it. We feel good about the work that our students do. And the final comment is uh, those of us who are older, when we see young people like you with your abilities, with your analytical skills, with your dedication, we have more trust in our future. Our future will be in your hands. We feel more comfortable that you're going to be the future leaders in different countries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Um, ready to see the announcement of the winners? Let me give yes, you sir. some numbers, some perspective first. So this semester we had almost 6,000 people 
In fact, I think we got a total of like 6.5 thousand names submitted, but then not everybody survived the selection phase. Uh, so we had some professionals and kids who didn't pass the tests. And then we had also some university students who didn't pass the readiness test. So eventually we had close to 6,000 who were actually placed on teams. So that gave us about a total of about a thousand teams. I think if you add up the early track and the late track, it was something like 1,200 teams plus or minus a few teams. Now, so we will be announcing the winner. And so the best one out of eight, but what you should realize that uh, you are already in top eight out of more than a thousand, at least as far as the presentation skills go. So as you know, uh, video presentations were not mandatory. So uh, university students could choose to do it. And just the fact that you showed up, that's a big step forward. Second, we got a lot of those video presentations. I was kind of hoping that not many teams will take us up uh, on this opportunity. But then once we got the, 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 the videos, I mean, you can imagine how many hours of footage that was. And so we had to recruit a lot of coaches and a lot of helpers just to watch your videos and select the ones that are uh, you know, good enough to be in this final round. So again, uh, just being among the eight best presentation teams, that's like already top, what, 1% less than that. So that's, you know, already one in final. So, but if you want to know which team did best today, let me see if I can share my screen. I'll show you the numbers. And again, that's based on the popular votes. So that's based on about 110 voters each time. So there were slightly more than 100 people voting each time. So you can see my screen, right? Yes. yes. So this is the list of the teams that presented in the order they presented. And I will reveal the average ratings uh, across all those 100 and whatever people cast their votes, going from the lowest to the highest. Although, again, I would like to note that the lower kind of four teams or so all got almost the same results. So there is really no, you know, like lowest. There are some teams that got good results and then there are a few teams that got even better results. So here are some of the numbers for the teams that were just in the general range. So not bad. And then let's look at the top three. So uh, 3.88 goes to team 51. 406 goes to team 35. And I think those were kids actually, so quite impressive. And then the highest and by far the highest number was for team 61. So congratulations, uh, team 61 match flat. Uh, your average is, is higher than everybody else's. Again, I don't think there is much, you know, differentiation, differentiation to be made here. So all of you are uh, in top, it becomes it's top 0.05%, so less than top 1%. But if you want to know how you did compare it to the other eight competitors, you're in the market. Congratulations. Obviously, all of you will receive additional certificates uh, commenting on your presentation skills and uh, we will make sure to include that in your performance review, in your recommendation letter. And in addition, we will send you the certificates that you are the finalists of the presentation selection round. And then uh, we will also comment especially on those teams that got the highest numbers. Congratulations, guys. Enjoy your weekend and uh, good job. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right. Yeah, I think that's why we, we do the clapping. Congratulations, guys. Get the microphones and do the clapping. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great summer, everyone. Yeah, good summer. And we will be in touch. So even though we don't have the symposium this year in Singapore or Panama City, but we will have one next year. Obviously, you all are automatically on the invitee list. So hopefully we will be able to see you in 2021 at one of these symposiums. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Congratulations. And thank you so much, professors, for being here with us. Um, uh, really appreciate your time and, and effort. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.